morning. I'm going to call the meeting to order. It is 6.32 on March 28th. And we're going to dive right into our next session of budget presentations. And first up, we have the IT department. All right, you have the floor. Good evening. I'm sorry. What's up? Um, Judy, uh, for she was that complaint yesterday, and we didn't have a moment of guidance for that. Um, potentially, and some of our colleagues from the judge watching the um, the family view tonight with last year for Juneteenth chapter, but um, we found him last night, so it was possible to take a quick moment Yeah, we're going to take a moment of silence for the Nashville shootings and our colleagues that passed away suddenly in winter. Thank you so very much. All right, IT, thank you and good evening. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is David Weathers. I am the Director of Technology and Innovation Department. It's a little louder. Um, oh, it's a little louder. Oh, sorry. My name is David Weathers. I'm the Director of Technology and Innovation. Um, I'm also joined here by Warren Plummer, uh, Assistant Director, which is monitoring the AV for tonight. Um, we are starting on page 38. Um, overview of our department is myself, uh, Warren Plummer. We have two technicians and also a newly appointed um, GIS member that joined our team. Um, I do want to point out that the vacant position um, for the technician has been filled as of two weeks ago. Uh, on page 39. Um, I'm not going to bore you with my captivated reading skills. However, I do want to point out that a lot of the information on this page has been updated, and that's mostly due to the um, embracing of the in innovation in our department this year. Um, and then we get to page 40, um, which is our budget. Now, one thing I think everybody will notice on uh, this page is most, um, just about all of the line items have changed on this. And that's mostly due to uh, moving expenses into the correct accounts. Um, with the exception of uh, a GIS member joining a team and um, Microsoft 365 licensing, which is required for two-factor authentication with Munis and um, also required the insurance. Um, other than that, most of the line items have remained the same. Uh, and if you go to 42, um, we have one uh, budget modification in for this year. It is for a ITM solution, ITSM solution, which is Information Technology Service Management Solution. These are, um, within this solution, there's a lot of uh, tools that uh, IT uses. Two of those tools that we're looking at adding this year are uh, Service Desk and Asset Management. Uh, right now, we don't have any uh, means for tracking requests, um, contacting customers, having customers contact us, and tracking all of those and doing any metrics on them. Uh, that's the service desk, and the service desk is actually um, help desk, uh, but the new new uh, term for help desk is now service desk. Or, And then the asset management is basically what it is. It's uh, tracking all of the IT or technology assets. Um, and allowing us to be able to um, visually look at the assets, see what we have in place and what we need to replace. And it just gives us a good visibility of what we have overall in the IT and um, any technology information that we have. And that would be it. So I just wanted to keep it brief. If anybody has any questions, I would be free. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you for the presentation. 
uh, two quick questions as it relates to um, the uh, uh, technology in this room and in council chambers. Often when we are um, at committee meetings, um, there's either no training that for us or when there are most recently, I know Zoom upgraded and now you can see the yeah. raise of the hand, yeah. but is there an opportunity for us to get interactive like tablets in front of us so that we can see residents who are on, we can't see nothing, all we see is what's being presented to the, right. uh, the screen. And is there anything where you can zoom in camera upgrades, software upgrades for this room and in council chambers? Yes, so um, unfortunately they didn't, we reviewed all that, but I do have some, um, some solutions that we can look at. Uh, council chambers, there's a few different solutions. Obviously, tablets are a solution. Um, we can get tablets for each of the members up in the top, um, and those will also have cameras, so you can use them for cameras or however you want to use them. There is another solution is um, there, I call them uh, AI cameras, um, and what they will do is there's two cameras instead of one camera, and they'll zoom in on the speaker or the active microphone. Um, at the time that they're talking. Um, and that that's another upgrade that we can look at doing. Um, that's for the council chambers. Uh, for this room, it's a little bit more of a project. Um, this room wasn't, this room in, uh, architecturally isn't really designed for audio visual. And I think when they put the uh, technology in place in this room, they weren't thinking hybrid in, in Zoom. I think it was prior to, uh, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was prior to COVID. Um, and as everybody knows, everything changed after COVID. Uh, I don't think anybody planned on doing hybrid and full Zoom meetings at that point. So unfortunately, in this room, the technology would have to be all uh, um, built from the ground up. Um, and I do have uh, proposals for some of that stuff um, and some preliminary budgetary numbers for those as well. And that's um, in the CIP section, is that correct? That's not related to what you just presented? It's not related to the budget, and, and that's why I was mentioning earlier. It was um, it came up after we did the, the budgets and the CIP, uh, the CIP budget. So. so the solutions that we're talking about, they're not currently related to not. any of the budget modifications or okay. the CIP? Okay, right. so I would ask that we kind of brainstorm in the appropriate form, because I think we really want to get and stick yes. and have some discipline as it relates to the budget and what's on the table. But good question, and I'm happy uh, to continue to yep, support the One more question um, as it relates to uh, technology. I think mm -hmm. it's important because most times I have the agendas, I have to forward it to my personal email to be able to um, print. Is there any solutions for council members to get some type of a portable device to be able to check for? So most times I do it from my phone or my laptop, and I can't open it. And so is there an opportunity for us to fix that solution so that we are able to access documents that we need to be yeah, and I think this. I, I think the tablets I think the tablets would be a good option um the tablets the uh the pricing on tablets and the technology on tablets has changed uh, dramatically um I mean there's some tablets out there that have true Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision on them um so the they not only give you a good picture, they'll give you the sound that you need on uh, a Zoom conference or something like that, but they also have a good size screen with um, with the resolution that you can pull up a large document and look at them. And um, they're small, they're portable. Uh, you know, the other option is a laptop, but now we're looking at a full computer that you want to carry around. And I don't think that's what everybody wants to do. So those tablets um, used in the council chambers could actually be used for a uh, good for those devices as well. Those serve two purposes. Thank you. Council Mayor. Uh, thank you. I, that's interesting to me. I, I, I've i had a problem of hearing in this room. And it's driven me, so I am getting here uh, some some um, hearing aids the next week or two because of my hearing. I, I'm sitting here like this trying to hear things, and this room is not very good that way. Right. Right. And uh, Even our council chambers, uh, there's a problem, and uh, I know this is just for going out. It doesn't really augment things. And we've had, you know, we do occasionally have people my age with hearing problems. Mm -hmm. We had a mayor that was even deafer than I am a few years ago. And uh, um, it's so that's something we should look at, too, in the, in the sound system and in the council chambers, if we could possibly get something that makes it possible for I mean, 
I'm not too old to be president. I ought to be able to be on the council. So, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think um, I think the in as far as the council chambers go, I think the 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 bones, the the infrastructure is there. I think we just need to, <laughs> I think we just need to upgrade the infrastructure and add some features to it. And and that could also be my um, my voice. I tend to talk softly, so I I apologize for that. You carry a big stick. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Um, Thank you. Uh, I can hear you clear. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my question is more geared on um, both internally and externally. Um, I see IT as a critical uh, department, uh, especially when I've been talking about how could we um, streamline efficiencies and I think IT touch every single department when it comes to how can residents go online to fill out forms instead of having to come in and interface with someone making things efficient I mean I was looking through the book and, and my question to you first would be what is the vision of the department where it, where is it going and what are some of the challenges and opportunities obviously you know, and someone please correct me if I'm wrong. We've gone from a two department type of thing, individuals within the department, to now, you know, we have three additional positions. Mm -hmm. How is that going to help what the vision is of the department in basically connecting the dots across the organization right. and making sure that we're more efficient internally? And at the same time, externally, how we're communicating with residents and creating a platform for them to get information timely and, and so on. Right. So just give me a little insight. So I know I've uh I know in our um on page 39, some of that is in here with the new uh, descriptions and mission. However, um, I think what you're looking for is um where do we see ourselves as an IT department? moving forward, not only for the town and the departments, for the community as well. Um, so we do, and, and I, um, you know, I started to put together a three to five year plan. Um, and in that three to five year plan, I wanna engage IT into the community. Um, usually IT is in the background, we work behind the scenes um, and we keep things running, but in general, a lot of people don't see IT. They're, they don't know that we're there or, you know, they know we're there, but we're really working behind the scenes. And what I'd like to do is start working with other departments um, to start creating some programs and maybe some awareness training and workshops and stuff for the community. So, so we can actually show the community that we are an IT department. Um, we do IT for the town, but we also want to be here for you as well. Um, so we do want to start providing services for, for the uh, community as well. Um, and as far as the department, uh, the town and the departments themselves, we're doing a lot of work. Um, I know we'll be touching base on some of it on the CIP, um, but we need to get involved more with each department and what they're doing and see if we can help speed things up with the departments or maybe help better um, take some of the old, um, old ways of things. One of the big things with innovation and my biggest word for innovation is change. Um, I know a lot of people don't like change, but to get to the next step and to get to the next level um, or whatever that we want to take the business, things have to change. And um, that's one thing that we're going to start looking at is changing some of these processes and changing the way we do things to better off and, and help the departments um, serve the community better and work together better as a town. And my last question, thank you for that. My last question, do you believe that the current uh, staff that is there with an IT department is what's needed to, to get us to the next level? I do. Um, I think we have the, the staff that we have is very good. We have um, two technicians, which is adequate for what we're doing. Um, you know, when we did um, studies and, and I took a look at our IT department and compared it to other IT departments in other towns, we were about average at staff level. Um, there's a few towns that have a little bit more and a few towns that have less, but it really depends on the size of the town. 
Um, for the work that we have moving forward for the next year or so, um, we are, we have an adequate staff, um, but um, some of the some of the stuff that I'm looking at down the road, um, we probably will be short a staff or so because there are some stuff that we're doing moving forward that we're going to require more training for our staff and they're going to start getting stretched thin. Um, however, that's next fiscal year, the fiscal year after, but um, as the staff is for right now, yeah, we 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 have enough staff. Thanks. Yep. Oh, it's already on. Yeah. Speaking of IT. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, first, thank you very much for your presentation. I, I love when we come together for these budget sessions because they're almost like annual checkups uh, with our different departments. Yep. Um, and it, it allows you to, get, I guess, uh, some uh, a bit of our vision for what we would hope. Uh, I think some of what you just said in your last couple of answers touched upon uh, both things that Councilor Merritt and Councilor Curran uh, brought up. One thing that Councilor Merritt brought up, which is very important, is accessibility. Hmm. We want to make sure that all of our residents um, are able to participate regardless of uh, any, any barriers that they may have uh, that may traditionally get in the way of them uh, being involved in our democratic process. Um, so uh, Council Mayor, thank you very much for bringing that up. That's something that I personally wouldn't think of because I, I don't have that. Uh, but uh, so thank you very much for bringing that up. But um, one thing that you know I'm hoping, a uh, vision that we can see for IT and, and all of our departments when it comes to communication with our residents is uh, something that is, uh, to I guess to intertwine more of these communications, uh, to bring them together a bit more. I'm hoping in the future we can find some way to, um, I guess, bring our town communications under one roof to possibly cut costs. Mm. Um, uh, now, I don't know what that looks like because I'm not the professional in the field, but I do know that in the future we're going to have to find ways to shave here and there in order to um, deliver more savings to our residents and uh, better bang for their buck. Right. Um, so um, I'm hoping perhaps you may have an idea of what that looks like, or maybe this might spark something. I think you're right. It, it will spark. Um, and again, and I refer back to the three to five year plan that I'm putting together. Um, there are some things in there that um, that will be touching on the community um, to help the community save, um, you know, some broadband access, additional sure. broadband access outside of what we have, um, some services that we can provide to them. Um, and not only with the uh, communications department, but we'll be working them, with them closely as well. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity that we can do to uh, broaden the communication and interactions with the with the community. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Weathers, just help me out here. Can you share a little bit about the service desk? I don't, I'm thinking of a help desk, and is that a designated person, or how would that work? Yeah, so um, service desk is a help desk. Um, a lot of the terminology is changing because the service desk is is more of a, um, a place where we go and get our daily data work. It's a communication point and a, and a working point for us for um, daily work. So it's not necessarily a person sitting in front of a phone and answering phones. It's more of a um, an application that um, anybody can use to put in a request. And it doesn't have to be a trouble ticket. It doesn't have to be my computer's broken. They can put in a request saying, hey, my, I need a new uh, printer or I have a new hire starting. And that'll kick off a, a process within this help desk to say a new hire is coming in. Um, the, the step, it's got to go to IT for a computer. It's got to go to um, public works for an ID card. Um, so it, it, it will work on that stuff automatically, but it also give us a, a good overview and a dashboard of all the problems that we're looking into. And it'll help us determine um, where, where, we're, um, where we need the support. If the switches are going bad, it helps us um, kind of focus in on uh, specific areas of it. So um, to answer the question, no, it's not a split one person. It's more for the entire department. Okay, but managed by? Managed by IT. In a designated person or the whole team? The whole team. Okay. The whole team has a part in the in the service desk. Okay. Yes. And, and um, someone brought up the 
technology in this room, and I just wanted to get a sense from you, the support from IT as it relates to the new or renovated library spaces and Prosser and McMahon, are you all intimately involved in working with the library and its team? Um, I just started being involved uh, just about a month and a half ago. Um, so I do have um, plans and I do have ideas of where they're going and how they're going. We haven't been able to get really in depth on the um, technology. It's just, we haven't gotten that far in the project, I believe. So once we get to that point, then I will be able to jump in and a lot more and, and help out with EV and, and IT stuff in that building. Absolutely. And, and my last question is, what is your greatest challenge as, I guess, as a department with respect to supporting the town? Oh, greatest challenge. Um, adoption from everybody. Um, I think that's going to be the, the challenge. Uh, like I said, the innovation portion of the, the department is it means change. So we're going to we have a lot of changes that we're going to be bringing up um, and it's going to be tough to get everybody to change how they're working today um, to move forward to um, a better solution or maybe just a new solution and get rid of the old and that's it kind of goes with the technology as well uh, the phone system is one big one um you know the phone system that we have what we've been talking about it shortly it's an old phone system um everybody's used to picking up the phone and answering the calls um a lot a lot of technology has changed and we're going to be moving towards a unified communication solution which means you don't necessarily have to have a phone on your desk right. it could be a cell phone it could be off your computer it could be a headset um, so a lot of the biggest challenge is going to be pushing out the change okay. and the adoption from everybody to. And I know I said that was my last question, but I'm thinking about that because I know in my office, we don't have telephones. Everything is off of the computer. Exactly. Uh, but if you had to to rate our technology overall from a scale of one to 10, where we are and where we want to go, where would you currently uh, rate our technology? Uh, reluctantly, I have to say it's about a six. 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 Yeah. Okay. So Thank we do you. have a lot of work to do. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes, great uh, presentation. I, I just had a question in reference to website development. Is that through IT or through another office? Communications. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to find out. Oh, just, yep, I'm just a clarifying question. The um the service desk, is that a software program? It is. Okay. Yes, that's all. To um to uh Councillor Aaron's question previous to strategic communications, that side is assigned to IT. Um and despite um it's considerable effort, as you all will recall that some of you anyway, um, town council funded a website overhaul two years ago. And um, it, it, it just wasn't moving. Um, before I leave, I'm saying that Ms. Rogers and Mr. Wolf are going to be giving me a sneak preview of what will soon be the overhaul website so this office has um we've seen some of what they've done uh, the website is the next highly anticipated um, rollout working of course with that but they mm -hmm. took it by the board council mcclary um to um add piggyback off of the deputy mayor um, do you think that cybersecurity or malware is a greatest threat to us? Over the last couple of years, I've seen local towns be hacked and systems shut down. Um, how would you rate our cybersecurity defense here in town? So, yes, it's, uh, it is a threat and it's growing um, every day for the last several years. Um, our cybersecurity level is is um, very low. I'll put it that way. Um, we're looking at getting cybersecurity insurance. However, we have to get two-factor authentication up and running. We have to get um, our mail system updated. There's a lot of stuff that we need to do on the network as well to do that, and that's part of that's part of some of the CIP stuff that we're looking at. Um, 
but uh, also is secu uh, security awareness is very big on that. Um, a lot of the security breaches and uh, viruses, malwares that we get, it's usually through the end users and it's not their fault. It's just they're not aware of what they're supposed to be looking for. You know, you get an email and the email looks legit. It's from a company or a person that you think you know, um, and they'll click on an opening and uh, it just so happens that that has a virus in it. So awareness training is probably number one um, that we have to implement. And I've been looking at that. Um, not only that, but the IT team needs to be um, trained and up to speed with uh, security and awareness as well. Um, one of the things I'm looking at right now, starting next week, is I'm going to be taking uh, uh, a class called CISSP, a Certified Information Security Specialist. Um, and that's going to help out with just the overall security, um, just knowledge of what's new out there and what are we going to be looking for from, you know, from last year, the year before. Uh, but also we're looking at some of those security training classes for our staff as well. So that was my next question. Is it mandated for staff to do uh, a phishing and malware and all this other training annually? Yes, it is. Um, all staff, not just IT staff. Um, security awareness training. I don't know that I want to say that it is it's not we still can move forward with cybersecurity insurance, but it's a little bit easier to get with that awareness training. Thank you. Um, and my final question is, I've noticed in here that other departments have benchmarking and IT department doesn't have benchmarking compared to other communities. Is there a particular reason for that? There is. Um, we started looking at benchmarking and it's extremely hard to benchmark um, services that we provide versus services that the other town departments provide because they're providing actual programs and actual services where we're looking at it as we're providing services to town employees so there's not a it, there's not a lot out there we can benchmark um the two only the only two things i could think about benchmarking was staff levels which is very um it's very basic and the staff level benchmarking that i did with uh, the other three towns is um, they're very, they're all average. Um, they're about four, five, six, and maybe seven people. Um, the other staff, uh, the other thing with benchmarking is budget. Um, and the overall budget for all three of these towns that we looked at, uh, compared to our town, um, were very close, if not um, uh, the same for each budget. Uh, and that basically what I looked at is the overall town budget and compared it to the IT budget. And every every single um, IT department for the town is just under one percent of the uh, entire town budget. Great, and I noticed that that was too my friend question. But are we moving to a cloud system, Microsoft yes. Cloud Office 360? Yes, we are actually um, halfway into migrating to Microsoft 365 for email and all Microsoft applications. And the phone system that we're looking at is also going to be a cloud-based phone system as well. Thank you. Let me, yep. let me just add on. There are some exciting things ahead, such as that uh, cloud or uh, Microsoft 365 uh, that David is is really spearheading. Um, under the benchmarking, uh, everything that you see in the in the document doesn't reflect the level of effort that staff put into the benchmarking. Uh, David was actually a leader in benchmarking. He had IT benchmarks. If anything, it's probably more advanced and sophisticated and not simple enough. Um, and, and actually, the uh, the model that we settled on, the, the, the graph, uh, I got it from him. He was uh, the first department that put forth his of uh, benchmarks and I kind of adapted all of the other departments to what he presented. So he really has looked at other, we just didn't put it in and that was kind of a negative decision that I made. I want to take this opportunity because it's probably my last time. Um, as he talked about innovation and breaking it down simply because innovation really is a uh, change. Um, this whole organization um, needs to adapt to change. And I would put uh, the town council on that list at the top of the, the list. And he mentioned some things and answering some other questions, such as uh, iPads for uh, the town council. Um, and I, I know it's a topic that has come up before maybe years ago and 
it was kind of rejected. Um, but government affairs, in addition to what India does in strategic communications, uh, we are looking at uh, an overhaul, a more efficient process for managing all of these boards and committees. And the biggest things that boards and committees and the council do is you meet. And so there are agendas and then there are minutes. Um, and we haven't, we haven't even began to take advantage of some of those technologies that are out there, which really does mean that for the chief legislative group, you need to be in tune and for some of those um, uh, programs, those applications that we're going to be advancing to, in effect, you need an office. Now, an office can mean physical space, it can mean technology. Um, there aren't very many places that I've worked and I'm not promoting this where uh, legislators uh, not only have offices, but they have staff, and they certainly have uh, gadgetry for, you know, you all use your private stuff to keep up. And I've heard different ones of you, such as Council Politis last summer, I remember, you know, saying, you know, I, I couldn't access this. And, you know, um, you all do a lot of work, a lot of time and effort. And for you to short shortchange yourself, and I didn't put, I haven't put it in any budget, but it probably would have been coming. Um, you know, an iPad and that level of investment just to keep up with all that you have to keep up with. The fact that you all don't uh, take advantage of like the National League of Cities and um, you know. And, and in some ways it can be said for the whole organization. Bloomfield is just not you know, networked and kept up. And the only, the only one who's being shortchanged is the Bloomfield uh, community. So moving forward, I hope you all will be open to the change that David has been, uh, been talking about and, and participating in stuff. And it should be at the town's, the town's expense, quite frankly. That's just the way, just the way that it's done in other governments to make you the very best that you can be. This is we're looking at, you know, administration and, 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 career professionals being the best that they can be. Uh, I just have a couple of questions before you go. Um, the one question that I think is important, and I don't believe we've been able to get this information, as we look at you know the libraries coming on board, and there's a lot of technology involved in that, how do we keep track? Um, do you currently have a way to uh, to basically show all our fixed assets, uh, whether it's uh, software, hardware? Are we able to track that? Because you talked about, you know, the phone system. You talked about, you know, the um, other areas where we may need to improve to get better service and so on out to the community, and whether it is internally or externally. Do you currently have um, a tracking of our assets? Uh... So the short answer to that is unfortunately no. Yeah. The um, additional question, uh, we that part of that ITSM solution is asset management. And this asset management will track all of technology, whether it be a TV, an audio visual, um, a computer, um, a camera, anything that touches the network that's uh, we are connected to, the asset management will track. It'll it'll actually get down to software licensing on individuals' computers as well. Um, so that's why I think one of the fundamental parts of IT not only is a help desk or what it is service desk, but is asset management. And it's it's extremely tough to run and manage a um, IT infrastructure without visible knowledge Correct. of what's out there. Correct. No, that's that's I think that's critical. And my last question, uh, that, that technology you said that we have in place when someone orders, whether it's an application or a new computer and so on, it, it, it can be tracked. And obviously there's a three-way approval process. I think that's pretty good because what it does, it eliminates waste uh, and it basically puts certain criteria in place that you know you just don't 
order something right and you could be able to track that and analyze that over time so i do support it i use it and it's it's very efficient yeah. within uh, the organization so i think really, yeah. really i think well. yeah. i think part of that um what we call it, it's a workflow process yeah. part of that is uh, taking out all the work that the users have to do and making the job a lot easier um, we've actually gone as far as putting um, bundle PCs together instead of going out and saying, hey, I need a PC, I need a monitor, I right. need a mouse. It's all in one bundle. Yeah. So when we order, it's one big bundle of order. Yeah, and no, all I'll they have be... to do is put laptop or PC and that's it. Yeah. And, and next year, we're sitting here talking about this to get some sort of analysis to show, yes. you know, that, hey, here are the cost savings based on this technology, because I think it's right. pretty, it's a pretty right. efficient process. So thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, I think I'm a little shocked that we aren't doing this yet um, because uh, my job is connected to West Hartford and everything is done by help desk. Right. Um, we just transitioned. And I think I told Warren, I don't really like it yet, but I'm not too familiar with it with the 365. Mm -hmm. um, but it had a lot of features that will help us to be a little bit more efficient. Um, to the town manager's point, a couple years ago, we did talk about getting iPads or laptops and cell phones so that you don't have to use your own personal thing. And it was almost like Armageddon. How dare us? Oh, go back into the minutes. <laughs> um, it, so to say, I understand your concern about change. We've never done it this way before. Um, it's never happened this way before. We shouldn't have to pay for that for um, counselors. So I'm excited that hopefully we've turned that page from it's never done this way before to us, this is the way we need to do it to be more efficient. Um, I'm definitely uh, excited about um, your budget modification. And um, with that, I know that we had to go through the whole 365 training in West Hartford, and every employee had to go through that right. training. Right. Will that be taking place here as well? Yes, um, only not. A, it's not going to be a interactive full training. It's more going to be more of um, you know an overview. Um, this is how it works. This is how you get to it. Um, all the applications work the same. It's just a matter of how you get through them and where they are at that point. So yes, there will be some training. Um, it just won't be uh, in depth type of training. Um, but this this is actually more of a question that falls with the town manager's point. Um, one, that's, I'm surprised as well that we're not doing it, but then again, this is my first turn. Um, what, what would that fall under? Where would we have to, if we were to make that allocation, let's say in the next budget, would that, where would we have to make that request from? From the contingency? Town council budget. Town council budget overall. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think we definitely need that between uh between iPad phones. I, I think I think the both <laughs> I think both of the iPad and phones are something that we definitely should have just for basic not only keeping up with everything that happens here, but also basic communication with the residents. I think it would definitely help. Some ways across the state, but also across the country. Mm -hmm. Everybody doesn't have to do it, but you all should be out there because all everybody else does it. There, there's a lot of value, a lot of value. Yeah, that's a good point. Awesome. We're going to move on because we have three other presentations. <laughs> but thank you so much, Perfect. IT. Thank you. All right, moving right along to DPW. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 All right, Public Works, come on up. I hope the council sees that we already have additional microphones. <laughs> Where? On all of the discs. Oh, Instead of having uh... to pass them, I can do it. Oh, 
always have public parking on vacation because of the federal snow. <laughs> no vacation till April 1st. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Mayor, Deputy Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the council. My name is Daniel Carter and I am the Director of Public Works and Facilities. I am joined here by Yvette Varela, who is our Administrative Analyst, Sarah Cody, the Deputy Town Engineer, Glenn Garrity, our Facilities Manager, and Jonathan Tesey, who is our uh, Town Engineer. Uh, I am pleased to be here to present the Public Works Operating Budget for fiscal year 23-24. The Bloomfield Public Works Department is proud to be nationally accredited by the American Public Works Association. We achieved our initial accreditation in 2017 and were re-accredited in January of 2022. We continue to be the only accredited public works agency in the state of Connecticut and one of only three in New England. Accreditation by the American Public Works Association identifies the Bloomfield Public Works Department as an industry leader and model for what it means to be a professional, capable public works department. I'd like to direct your attention in the operating budget book to page 103, which depicts our organizational chart. Major changes from last year include the incorporation of the engineering department as a division of public works and the new position of assess assistant director of public works capital project manager. Uh, in addition, we have a part-time horticulturalist position in the operations division. All of these revisions were part of organizational realignment uh, in fiscal year 2023. The department consists of five divisions, the administration division with three full-time employees, the engineering division also with three full-time employees, the facilities division, which is comprised of eight full-time employees, the operations division, which is comprised of 19 full-time employees and one part-time employee, and the fleet division, which is com comprised of six full-time employees. Please direct your attention to the bottom of page 105, which depicts the department benchmarking, which is new for this budget year. The benchmarks compared Bloomfield to the communities of Rocky Hill, Windsor, and Wethersfield. The structure and responsibilities of the public, work, public works department in Windsor and Rocky Hill are similar to Bloomfield. The exception is Weathersfield, in which the Public Works Department is essentially made up of two main divisions, one being the Engineering Division and the other being the Physical Services Division. The Physical Services Division in Weathersfield cares and maintains all town buildings, including Board of Education, which explains the significantly higher budget and percentage of the total town budget. I am not going to go through each benchmark as I believe they speak for themselves. And overall, I think that our department sizes up very well as compared to our neighbors. Um, I'd just like to quickly run through um, our expenditures and the items which have significant changes. Uh, full, and I'm gonna do it quickly. Um, I don't wanna take any more time than we need. Um, Full-time payroll increased 0.84%, uh, primarily due to contractual step increases. Overtime payroll in, uh, increased $4,300 or 2.31% due to a regular regulatory requirement to respond to emergency call before you dig utility markouts after hours. Um, seasonal payroll, um, the one part-time employee was for a seasonal horticulturalist position, which was funded in fiscal year 2023 for $15,000. Um, Public work is recommending that this position be modified to a part-time year-round position and is requesting an additional $12,998 as a budget modification, which I will speak to later. Under operating expenses, um, equipment rental increased $4,500 or 29% due to the need for us to rent a screener to recycle accumulated earth materials stored at the public works facility into usable topsoil. This will save and dispose of costs and will reduce the amount of topsoil we need to purchase for operations work. 
contractual services uh, increased 5.01% or $5,000. This is primarily due to um, adding money for contractor services for hazardous tree removal. Uh, as you may recall, we eliminated the funds in our operating budget in fiscal year 23 uh, that we allocated for hazardous tree removal and funded it from the capital municipal grant as it was identified as an allowable expense if the trees were adjacent to roadways and were deemed a transportation related. This allocation is for trees not adjacent to roadways, but rather within town properties as we had no designated funds to remove we took down a tree in the middle of the town green. So that was that's a primary example of that. Um, education and training, no change. Bulky waste disposal, no change. Engineering services, no change. Lease payments, uh, increased $1,856. This, as you may recall, is um, a lease payment associated with an energy performance upgrade project administered by Amoresco, which was completed back in 2016. It has a amortized payoff schedule um, and um, these pay lease payments extend through the year 2030. So this is a contractual item. Utilities, good news. Utilities decreased $41,240 or 7.8%. This utility item covers the cost of electricity, natural gas and water associated with the Public Works Administrative Account. This account pays for utilities, which include streetlights, traffic signals, several town-owned streetlight accounts, the Public Works facility building itself, several parks that have electric and other utilities installed, and also accounts for the annual cost of our utility tracking software. The decrease is primarily due to recent energy saving initiatives deployed at all town buildings, that include control system recommissioning, lighting retrofits, and combined with an in-depth analysis on consumption trends for the past several years. Our energy forecasting calculations indicating, indicated that a less conservative projection would be feasible for the proposed year. Telephone, no change. Building maintenance. Um, this appropriation covers all annual interior maintenance and repairs on alarm systems, electrical repairs, elevator service, fire system maintenance. The increase of 2.08% is a result of annual increases associated with existing maintenance contracts for these services. Exterior maintenance. Exterior maintenance encompasses the cost of all town facilities, landscape irrigation, uh, in irrigation, this line item was reduced as recommended by the town manager, partly due to the two libraries coming offline in fiscal year 2024. Obviously, we would be looking for a restoration of funds to maintain the two exterior libraries when they come back online, which would probably be, I'm not sure what the construction is, probably in fiscal year 25. Uh, maintenance supplies, no change. Cleaning supplies, no change. Office supplies, no change. Uniform and clothing, no change. Construction materials, no change. Equipment and parts. We have been experiencing uh, through inflation, dramatic increases in motor vehicle parts for the last two or three years. Uh, and we've had to cover uh, shortfalls in that category for the last two fiscal years. And, it, and, I, and I anticipate having to call, um, cover a shortfall this year as well. So we're asking for a 6% increase, and this cover is to cover the inflationary increase of general fleet parts and supplies. Gas and diesel. Costs in this category cover, cover all gas and diesel for the town's entire fleet, and estimated uses, usage is based on a five-year average. Um, this includes fuel for police, public works, senior minibus, and the general governmental fleet. The cost of gasoline increased 53 cents a gallon uh, to $3 a gallon. Um, the term of our gasoline contract runs from January 1, 23 to December 31st, 2023. Dan, so the last. Um, it, this is very thorough and we, and we thank you. If yeah. you could just point out the drivers that you really want the okay. council to address, that would be helpful. And then I'm sure the council would have any additional Absolutely. line items. Yep. Thank you. So the, the fuel is a big driver for us. So, and then our diesel cost, we just locked in, that increased 50 cents a gallon. Um, collectively, the cost of the two commodities, gasoline and diesel fuel, 
we're, we're budgeting an increase of $40,270 or 15.9%. Um, road aid materials, um, that increased $67,368 or 27.9%. That's primarily due to the increase in road salt prices. Um, treated salt prices increased this fiscal year, $22 a ton. White salt increased uh, over $7 a ton. We currently use approximately $2,500 dollars of uh, 2,500 tons of salt per season. Um, I'm sure other departments have pointed out the employee benefits and the increases associated with op-ed, life and disability, medical insurance, and retirement. Um, those were large increases for us. So that just runs through our individual accounts. To give you a summary, um, I'd like to refer you to page 110, our budget modifications. We have requested five budget modifications for the coming fiscal year. Our number one priority budget modification was for a safety training program consultant. Our first priority budget modification is $10,000 to acquire the services of a safety training program consultant. The department recently completed a voluntary review by Con OSHA, which identified deficiencies with our current training and recommendations for improvement. By participating in this voluntary Con OSHA program, no monetary fines were assessed with any of violations that we were that were identified. The department is recommending modifications to our existing trading program, which will utilize job safety consulting service, which will review our current safety program and training to develop a customized program, which will track and identify required training for each, empl each employee on an annual basis to ensure compliance with the relevant occupational safety and health administration or OSHA regulations. Programs of this nature have been proven by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration to drastically lower hard and soft costs associated with employer medical expenses. It is our goal to deploy a comprehensive training program that will keep our staff well informed of best workplace practices, procedures, and protocols to carry out tasks of a high risk nature in the safest possible manner. Our second budget modification request was to expand the part-time horticulturalist position, which was a not a year round position. It was a seasonal position to a year round part-time position. Um, we received funding of $15,000 for the position in fiscal year 23. Subsequently, the finance director and human resources director expressed concern that the position would be susceptible to unemployment claims due to it not being a year-round permanent position and will require, require the recruiting process every season to bring a person back on board. I am requesting $12,989 to make this a year-round part-time position. This change is being proposed to alleviate the concern that the position would be susceptible to unemployment compensation claims. Our third budget modification is on page 112, fleet optim optimization or GPS. We were just talking about technology. So this falls under the technology with respect to acquiring a fleet opti optimization technology GPS for the town's fleet. It will automate preventive maintenance, reduce town time, identify fuel waste, and provide the tools to right-size the fleet with utilization that GPS provides. This technology not only reports vehicle location and travel history, but also monitors vehicle diagnostics and equipment operation. This technology will proactively spot itch issues such as failing batteries and engine fault codes through the over-the-air diagnostics. This will allow us to quickly identify vehicles in need of service to protect vehicle health and extend vehicle lifetime. This level of funding that we are requesting would equip approximately 60 vehicles in our pieces of equipment. Our fourth um, budget modification request is for, for maintainers. Um, and we're requesting five new positions, five maintainers. Um, fourth priority is for $404,000 for five maintainer two positions. The department has experienced a in increased service level demands. The staffing levels have not increased to keep pace with these demands. 
The 2014 Park Master Plan prepared by Fitzgerald and Halliday recommended five new posi positions. Since 2014 and the Park Master Plan study was prepared, three new facilities have come online. The Human Services Building that we're in now, the Philly Park renovation, which we will be beginning construction of phase two on this year, and the Green Whale Trail. In addition to the department is aware of initiatives to improve several of our existing facilities and passive recreation areas. These facilities include the town pool with the new splash pad, uh, 460 Tunxis Avenue and the Prosser and Wittenberry libraries. And we're talking about uh, improvements to Billy Fields as well. It is anticipated that improvement of these facilities will bring increased demands for es essential department services. Initial consequences of not funding these positions will be no increase in maintenance service levels. As facilities are improved and upgraded, core function maintenance responsibilities will fail and service levels will deteriorate from their current level. Our first, our fifth prior, uh, budget modification was to reclassify the building maintainer um, at a cost of $7,856. The department has one building maintainer position and uh, that individual retired in July of 22, 2022 after over 20 years in the position. The position over the ensuing months was advertised several times without success. Uh, we struggled to find an adequate replacement and feedback received indicated that our pay is below market value, which could be the reason for a lack of qualified applicants and the difficulty in attracting a qualified applicant. Uh, we have revised the job description to better reflect the needs and requirements for the position and are recommending a reclassification, which is more in line with the market for a skilled maintenance person. Um, in, in full disclosure, we have offered uh, and uh, a building maintainer a position and it has been accepted. The individual has not started yet, so this... Um, you know, when we requested these modifications, these were all submitted back in January when we were we were struggling. So in full disclosure, we do have a, a identified an individual. We're hoping that that individual will work, will work out, but we do see it as, as um, a, a deficiency that should be corrected. So in summary, um, of our $277,235 increase, $167,000 of the increase is encompassed within op-ebb employee benefits, which are outside of our control. Commodity price increases, namely fuel, road salt, and fleet parts, resulted in a cumulative increase of $122,638. These two categories added together equal $289,638. Through other cuts, we were able to keep our total budget increase to $277,235. Um, this concludes my presentation. Uh, and on my behalf of myself and my co colleagues, I wanna thank you for your time and your support. Uh, and we're certainly here to answer any questions that you may I'd have. I'd like to do a disclosure before we open it up to the questions. Um, I don't wanna take away from Dan, um, Dan's disclosures. Um, but new positions, one of which went to public works last year as the second largest department in the organization that told you about my concerns with succession planning, but our second largest department that you ever had uh, an assistant director. One of the things that the council allowed me to do last year in the restructuring was to combine giving them an assistant director uh, in combination with a project manager uh, and someone in the future who will take this CIP to ensure that projects are getting done more efficiently. Um, of those eight positions last year, three technically are still unfilled. Um, one of which is um, a recent appointment, and I'm not sure then when it becomes effective. April. But, um, Glenn Garrity has been uh, promoted to that assistant director, a uh, project manager position. We had gone through interviews and basically had determined that um, we would not move ahead with an appointment, but we were on the verge of losing um, Glenn to another organization by one of our 
uh, comparable uh, communities that understand it. Um, so coming up probably in the next week or two, uh, we will uh, assume that assume that new roles. So congratulations certainly are in oh, order. Thank you, sir. It's important that we should have an account to deal with that. Thank you. Thank you so much for that presentation. You're welcome. There's a lot, I know. <laughs> that was great. Uh, we're going to go to Councilor Curtin, Councilor McClary, and just I saw your hand, sir, and then I think it's Thank you, uh, Ben. Thank you, and to your staff. Thank you. Um, obviously, this is one of the departments that people could actually feel and touch, yeah. because as you use our roadways uh, within our neighborhoods and uh, the pass through, you see whether our roads are good or they're bad, right? And people can relate to that, and they can equate that to their taxes, right? Yeah. Why am I? driving around in Bloomfield and the roads are bad. But I have to commend you and your team, and this is something I've always been impressed with, uh, moving to Bloomfield when it comes to storms and any disastrous events, you guys are always at the head, head of the curve when it comes to clear the, 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 the streets and so on. So I just want to commend you for that. Thank this you. year, we've been blessed with good weather, so we haven't seen you in action. Uh, but the one area that I want to start off on is where the fuel uh, costs. Yes. And I don't believe we've ever seen an analysis across the organization to see consumption usage mm -hmm. from various departments. And I think that's key because that's where you can cut a lot of costs, right? And that's where you can manage to get the real insight to sort of which department, which area is using a lot of that. Obviously, we look at the uh, public safety, they consumption should be high because they constantly use their vehicles and it has to be constantly running uh, 24 sevens. Uh, and public works is the same thing. So I think as we move forward, I think that's something that's critical to this organization to get a sense of how we spend it and what kind of um, negotiation we're using to make sure we get a good price. Right. And I don't know how that is if we if it's the union or whatever the case is, but we do we go out in the market. So we go to the market and typically we've been exercising contracts that are available through the Connecticut Regional Council of Governments. OK. And typically we sign contracts for a 12 month period. OK, so that's good. appreciate that. Uh, the other area that I think it's critical is and I'm sitting here and thinking I'm listening to what you're saying. When you're talking about staffing and so on. And I've been a big proponent of shrinking government, right? I think that's important because our role is to make sure a lot of that tax dollar goes back out into the community. So in the case of public works, I mean, we're looking here, you're talking about, um, you know, five additional positions and we're talking, you know, four or three. Um, does it make sense? And I know a portion of your budget is third party service. Uh, usually when you're doing some paving and uh, sidewalk with peers, I've seen over the years, you're using third-party service to, to do that. Now, obviously, in my opinion, that's savings, right? Because you don't have to pay that overhead costs and that burden you know, to hire employees to do that job. Uh, what I would like to know what percentage of your budget is third party service uh, when it comes to maintaining the roads and our parks and so on. Uh, that's the first question. And the second one pertaining to that is do you see us being able to transition to, you know, using third party services uh, instead of hiring more bodies? So your first question with respect to the percentage of our budget, which is subcontractors, let's say, I, I don't have that number, but I can provide it. Yeah. For you. Um, and as far as the second part of your question, can we accommodate the demands on our department with subcontractors? Mm -hmm. Some things we can and some things we can't. Um, some things are controlled contractually. So we have a we have a contractual history of providing certain services for our town, and that is controlled through labor contracts. 
So that would be more difficult to, let's say, outsource our historical um, work that the department has done. It would be have to be done through labor negotiations. Okay. Um, with respect to um, other types of services, it, it's having the ability to control our own ver workforce versus having to go out and contact a vendor to get somebody scheduled to get a task done can be problematic. And I'll use an example. We provide, we're the only label force for the available to every department in town. So what does that include? That includes everything from moving furniture to setting up for elections, to mowing, cutting grass, plowing the streets, collecting, I mean, the, 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 anything you can think of. We're the only we're the only game in town. They come to us. So I do think some of our defined tasks, if they could be split off and that would be a possibility. But then again, I think it would be difficult to do it on a lot of other things. And and my last comment is going back to page 105. When we're looking at some of the towns and I kind of checked off uh, Windsor and Rocky Hill, seems yeah. like the towns that we want to, as you stated in your comments. So I'm looking at the between the town of Windsor and Bloomfield road uh, miles maintained, mm -hmm. and I see we're at 110. They're at 143, and then I come down to the section, you know, fleet size, we're 141, they're 237, and acreage, uh, parks and slash spaces, we're at 1755, and they're at 587. And then I kind of, you know, look at what we're spending in our budget, and what they're spending in the one area is the capital road budget that I see there. Obviously, the last budget, we invest a lot in, in trying to target uh, maintaining our roadways. Right. And as you drive around, you really, it's hard to, to see that. I mean, we've seen some major roadways improvements, but what do you say to residents who are saying, okay, what about my inner streets? It hasn't been repaired to drainage. Those are the areas that people see every single day as well. Right. And I've heard over the years from residents, you know, it's like, hey, we're paying taxes and we don't see that improvement. And I know over the years we've talked about providing online a way where folks can see how roads are being addressed. Mm -hmm. And obviously there is a model in place to do that, right? It's just not my road is bad. Public work should repair it, right. resurface and so on. So just explain that to the public. And I think it's something that's important as we move forward to, to have that visibility for the community yeah. to see, because I think I'm a strong believer once folks know what's going on and your methodology and how you approach things, they're less, you know, they're still gonna be upset that their roads are not being right. prepared, but at least they'll understand. Right, so we, so I, I make it a point to try and explain to anybody who calls to me with a complaint about the condition of their road, about the holistic approach that we take. So every road is on a list. And if you call me and ask me, when is my road gonna get paved? It's, it's very simple. We have a list of roads with a, with a, um, with a cumulative list of dollars from, for every road in town. And you might be $7 million down the list. And I very simply just take 7 million, I divide it what we spend per year. Our request is always 1.6 million or slightly above that. We spent a little more than that last year. Um, so I just divide that into the, the cumulative road costs and it gives me an approximate number of years when we're, until we're gonna get to their road. It doesn't always make everybody happy. But 90%, 95% of the time, when I take the time to explain to them the holistic approach and we need to spend some money keeping our good roads good. And obviously we have roads that are really bad and we can only fix so many. We can't spend, if we spent all of our money fixing the worst roads first and just focused on that, we would fix less roads 
and the average condition of our roads will deteriorate. They won't increase. So last year alone, we went from a road surface rating of 71 and change, 71.5. We went to a 74.5, which is a huge leap forward. This is the seventh year that we've been using asset management. Our roads started at a 66 and change. We were at 71 after six years. We went up three, approximately three points in one year. We also infused more money last year. We did more road miles collectively, holistically. So we crack seal, we micro pave, we mill and pave, and we do full depth reconstruction. Those are in the order of expense. Roads that are really bad have to be full depth reconstruction. It's much more expensive per lineal foot to do. And I have people come to me and say, well, why are you spending money on Philly Street? And my road is still bad. But when I explain to them the holistic approach, and the point is we will, we got to work the program. We will get to these roads and not 25 years from now. Within the next decade, if we get to this program, all of our roads are going to be these worst roads, these roads that are in horrendous shape are going to be rebuilt. It just is going to take some time and patience. And most people are very understanding. It gives them a sense of comfort that at least we have a program, at least we're working a program rather than willy nilly just, you know, dealing with whoever calls the most and complains we'll fix or, you know, we have to do this many roads over here or this many roads over here. You know, we get a recommended program, we review roads, we make slight modifications for many different reasons. And we've been working the program and we've seen the numbers improve. I mean, the science is there. So thank you. And if I may real quick to provide just some perspective on those numbers, because um, I, I worked them out. So the town of Weathersfield is spending $17,600 per mile in their budget. The town of Rocky Hill is spending 15,400 per mile on capital improvements. Bloomfield is 14,500 and Windsor is 9,800. So compared to the other, other two, we're right in the same ballpark. We don't know what it is with Windsor. If they got ahead of the game at some point and their roads are in better shape or what they're but we're, we are in the ballpark with the other two tops. That we're looking at. No, I appreciate that. And obviously yeah. we have to look at a lot of the trucking and stuff that's now coming through, you know, the Niagara. So that's going to... And we do have a tremendous amount of in industrial properties yeah. and industrial customers and resident, you know, and, and uh, taxpayers and, and those, you know, they hammer roads. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, one just real quick, you know, um, in my time sitting on public safety last year, two years ago, I, I hear the value that the asset management third party system brings, but you know, and I'm a huge proponent of data and understanding following the science. But one thing I do believe is missing out of that particular formula is the quality of life and the, the human experience as far as densely populated streets that the science says aren't necessarily in the queue for um, new reconstruction, but then there's huge impacts on vehicles hitting the same pothole, right? And so it's, it's a combination of taking the asset uh, data and then applying it to the community that you know needs, you, you know the needs of. So, and I think that you guys know, have been doing a wonderful job as far as kind of toggling between the both and collaborating with that. So I think it's a combination of that. Sorry, Councilor McClary, Councilor Merritt, and then Councilor Mike. Um, thank you um, uh, to the public work staff. Um, uh, when I was in uh, my master's program, they uh, told us when I took my local government, state and local government class that uh, if you want to shut down a city or a state, um, the first thing that you do is go to and attack public works because um, public works ensure that people are able to move from one location to the next location in a safe manner. And so you guys do that here in Bloomfield. Um, is it safe to say that um, we have paid the most road in the history this year of your time? This past fiscal year, I can yeah. tell you in my time here, in my seven years here, we have we've addressed capital road improvements to the most lane miles since since in my seven years. So in, at least in the last seven years, I can't speak for what happened. Yeah, I, I know and, that. And I think the numbers show that. I appreciate that because I've heard, heard from people um, 
you know, they, they see the improvement, they saw the construction going on, and they were happy to see their taxpayer dollars put to work. Um, there are areas where we do, as I shared with you uh, today, this evening, there's areas where we have to improve, but I think um, this council is making significant investment to make sure that um, we catch up. I know you came a few years ago and said how behind we were um, and that we needed to catch up. And that's why we made the significant investment. Um, my question, next question is I think for Jonathan around um, the local safety roads committee. I noticed only $30,000 in the local safety roads committee when sitting on public safety. Um, and I'm sure the deputy mayor can attest to this. One of the most sought after uh, programs in the community now is the local safety roads committee. What was the rationale? What's the, the formula that you're using to come up with the $30,000 when you know that the man calls for more people who are in there traffic common devices on their uh, on their street. I, I do understand that we're applying we're applying for some urban renewal grants and some other grants from the um, infrastructure act book. What was the rationale around um, the thirty thousand dollars, Madam Mayor? Yes. So that this will come up in CIP. Do you want to wait for that? Yeah, let's wait for CIP. Okay. okay. I'll go to um uh, my next question. Um I've also been getting a number um of um uh, emails and uh, recently got my hand on um, the uh, Laurel Hill Park community complaint and read all of the. That, that's also a CIP matter. You can. Jeez. Okay. It will be discussed then. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. I'll wait to CIP then. Also, <laughs> Mayor. My one of my questions has been answered, but I'd like to. Uh, Repeat what the mayor said. And some of our roads are in such bad shape that I have to wind down in my street uh, mm -hmm. around the potholes. And now, now I'm tempted to go out and fill them myself. <laughs> so, you I, I understand what you're saying. And I, I heard the same thing from other people in the past. Mm -hmm. and, and it makes more sense to take care of our uh, main thoroughfares, we get more done, and, and help more people. But uh, I hope that we can get to the bad ones, not to this in future, but that it is definitely a problem. Yes, understood. Yeah, Bill's more of a do-it-yourself kind of guy. Um, <laughs> but the, the, it's more of a comment than a question, uh, because I, I completely understand your point on the uh, I guess the metric that you have to determine which roads come first and where you address before others. And I mean, it, it's a great metric. And of course, the, the Madam Mayor brought up a point of um, that it may not uh, take into account the quality of life factors and certainly is something that should be. Um, but I'm hoping that to Councilor Curran's point, uh, that perhaps we could uh, engage with the uh, Office of Government Affairs, right? Okay, the Office of Government Affairs to see if we can relay that information on the website so it's easily accessible to our residents so that they don't have to keep on calling you, Dan. You're, you're busy enough, Yeah. you know? No, and that. we can do that. We certainly can do that. We had a, um, maybe two years ago, was it, Madam Mayor, we had a uh, an asset management presentation. Yeah, that was really helpful. Kind of explain the process, and and we did have it up on the website. We can put that back up on the website if 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 the residents want to go through it, and and that way, and we can put the lists because all of the right. roads are rated; they're all ranked from you know from best to worst, and we can provide that information. And and with the government affairs now, it's yeah, I mean it's been a godsend for us because we're able to to push information out that you know we just didn't either have the resources or the or the technical savvy to do before and and India and Brian have been like I said they've been great for us and we've been we've been developing more programs more information to get out and more information what's bad about it it's all good you know so we can do that yeah then I mean if it's there might as well utilize it absolutely um, and so uh with the not only of course the ratings excel list but also the I'm not sure if you stated this but um ranking which you know what's going to be the one you address next so that mm -hmm. at least folks know at least like the I don't know the next five or ten so folks know okay well I see my street here I'm going to be I'm number three on the list right. and as they can see it move up um, it might it might help to you know bring divert some of the 
for lack of better words, energy that's coming towards you to uh, a more centralized place that our residents can all access and, and we can access as well. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, uh, Councilwoman, and then Council Polite, and then Beth. Thank you. So just a couple questions. Thank you for the work that you do. Um, thank you for answering and coming whenever I call. I don't want to know so exactly where my street is because I don't think I'm going to make that whole decade thing, but thank you. Um, question for you. For the part-time horticulturist and the building maintainer, are we adding, would it be $7,800 on top of what they're currently making now yes. for the reclassification? So $7,800 on top of what they're currently making. Correct. And the same thing for the part-time? Horticultural yeah. would be on the $13,000 would be on top of what we have allocated last year for that position. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So I just wanted to get that. I was also thinking, um, I know that you were saying um, we rented a screener. Yes. And that's good, right? Um, and there's other equipment that we rent. Is there any value in actually purchasing some of this equipment? And I know, I know maintenance. <laughs> Friend was yeah. like, oh, I know maintenance would probably be an issue, but I was just asking. Well, we, we've, we've toyed with the idea. So a screener is not something that we would utilize to the level that would justify a purchase. So it was something like right now, our rental, we're looking at renting it for a month. We honestly believe we could, we could do the majority of what we need to do in 30 or in four working weeks. Um, a screener is upwards of $100,000 and they go way up. So for us to expend, it's all a matter of utilization, right? Mm -hmm. For us to spend a hundred plus thousand dollars for a piece of equipment that's gonna sit 11 out of 12 months, doesn't make sense. The maintenance, so that's why we're looking to rent it. And that's probably what we would see, what we would do moving forward. Another piece of equipment that we rent is a crusher. We we rent it every second to third year. So when we do capital road work, we collect all of the broken asphalt, all of the curbs that we strip off the roads before we repave. And we had a massive pile behind Public Works. We brought in a crusher. It cost us about seven thousand dollars. Three days. We crushed all the material. We have a usable sub base material gravel fill that we can use. Um, it doesn't make any sense to purchase such an expensive piece of equipment for something that we use for a week every other year. So it's a matter of utilization. Thank you. Um, thank you. I think my question is a little bit more directed probably to the town manager. Um, last year at the beginning of budget, we sat in this room and we talked about the inequities of the people of color and one of the names that was brought up was Yvette Barella. And the fact that she was not really a clerk typist too, and that that was gonna be addressed with the budget item of a restructure, reorganizational structure. Yet, so I see it still here that Yvette, a person of color is still undervalued and is now still a clerk, clerk typist too, a year later under the reorganization. And I'm just wondering why. So there are two things. Um, I, I, I bet, but it's a good point. Um, so we did, um, I guess, last year around this time, and we get probably got the results just after the budgeting process. And uh, this employee, I bet, was one of, I believe, five up to employees that we brought in a consultant to make an assessment temporary because the council also approved to uh, look at a full classification study of all up to employees so out of that temporary review uh, I bet was affected by one pay grade as I as I recall and a subsequent adjustment it wasn't necessarily at the level that the department director, had recommended, but this kind of thing, we really do have to be scientific. But the, the consultant did say that until we could do a full review, um, that they were somewhat handicapped uh, in the most proper uh, assessment. So the town council approved the full review of up to employees. Um, we are in that process. I think we, we have the draft back at this point. Um, 
I haven't seen it. Um, no, I am about to leave. Um, but it is, it is coming. Now, in this budget, we have recommended looking at all of the other employee groups. So the building maintainer, for instance, that Dan um, presented, it's not timely enough for where he is and needing to fill that position, but we are asking town council to approve all of the um, all of the all of the other groups, including Teamsters. Um, sometimes it can be a slow process, but I, I think we're I think we're getting getting there. Okay. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Dan, and thank you to the whole team. Uh, I just wanted to first say that I, I believe that DPW is exceptional. Your response rate is by far, I think, uh, incredible. You all Thank do you. amazing work, and it's very satisfying to know if uh, any of us make a call that you all are responsive and addressing the needs and concerns. Uh, I, I think I was happy to hear the, not the plug, but you talked about the importance and sort of the relevance of the government affairs sort of help disseminate information to the community that you on your own could do, but it's not necessarily the best place for it to come from as far as- uh, And it's not our expertise. Economy of scales and your expertise. So I'm glad that we have the government affairs to sort of help uh, get that information out. Um, and I also recall last year when we were doing the road resurfacing, you had a schedule that went out in the mail and let people know, you know, when their road, the priority of roads and all of that. So I thought that was very helpful. And we've heard some talk about sort of getting that information out again. And so maybe you all can, can continue to do that. On page 105 with the capital road budget of $1.6 million, I just have a quick question. Last year, we made a additional allocation through some of the ARPA funds for road resurfacing. Is that included? That's not included in this current 1.6, is it? No. So that 1.6 million is the recommendation that comes from our asset management consultant that if you want to continue to improve the quality of your roads on the average, you need to spend that 1.6. So that is what we directly plug into our capital road request. Our council has been very generous. Last year, they gave us more money. Last year, we spent more money. Um, so, you know, the point is, is that if you were to, to you know, we're going to spend as much as we can and as much as we have available so we can accelerate the improvement of our roads. So when I talk to city or residents, when they're asking me, you know, when I come up with where they are on the cumulative total list, if they're 10 million out, I tell them to divide that by 1.6, that's going to give you your years. If we spend 2 million a year, it, it shortens. So as much as I can give them an, a sense for when they can expect maybe uh, some some improvements on their roads, it's all relative to funding. Okay. And, and my, my last question, I know last year, and this is following up on Fran's question, I think, uh, I asked some questions about the makeup and composition of your workforce. Right. And uh, I'm very interested to hear if there's been any improvements with respect to the number of women and people of color uh, that may have been hired over the last year to your group because again when I heard the numbers I was a little disappointed with the lack of women and, and right. uh, people of color so I'm just curious to find out what if any improvements uh, have taken place with regard to composition and makeup. So I, I do believe we have made improvements we've hired people of color in the last year and we've hired females in the last year so I do think as a whole I don't know what our exact numbers are but I think they've 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 improved since last year. Can we get the those numbers? Yeah, I'm sure Human Resources has those numbers. We can provide them. Okay. Just yep. so, you know, comparison from a year ago to today, yep. just be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, excellent presentation as always. Um, I remember a conversation we had, uh, and it may have been at last year's budget hearing, where it was said that quite a number of vehicles uh, have been tampered with in terms of catalytic converters being stolen. Would the GPS system be helpful in terms of being able to identify this type of activity before? Um, probably not. 
No. So, you know, that's a vandalism act, you know, stealing a, a catalytic converter. And, you know, knock on wood, we have not been a victim of that. Um, you know, we we have a we had a completely open facility. And literally, when we did our renovation and upgrade to meet our budget, we had to eliminate some things as we were in the last stretch, home stretch, and our security gates was one of them. But we are literally today, probably within five calendar days, we're going to we had gates installed. Um, and we are going to secure our property, Excellent. Um, which, you know, which is very important for us, because mm -hmm. if you look on our security cameras, it's amazing how much outside traffic we have on our property every weekend, you know, not necessarily with ill intent and right. we haven't had issues, but, you know, we're at the end of a public road, people drive down and then they just, you know, you're on, you're on our property. And so these security gates are a big improvement for us. And, um, the GPS is more for utilization. Um, we spoke about fuel use. We have a very good handle. We have seven years of history of how much fuel we burn. But now with the GPS, we can take that next step to identifying where we can optimize utilization. How, much, how many vehicles are idling and running but aren't moving? We're going to know that. We're going to be able to tell that. So that's utilization and optimizing utilization. And that's what that GPS technology can give us. Great. Great. Thank you. One, one more question. Uh, we had a lot of residents on Woodland Avenue that identified concerns about trucks uh, not necessarily tearing up the roads, but making it uncomfortable in their homes. Has there been any uh, traffic calming uh, uh, activities that I've taken. There have. So I think Jonathan could probably speak to Woodland Avenue during the CIP, but the through the local uh, road safety committee, they have we we passed a new ordinance that minimizes truck traffic. We also have traffic calming projects that we're going to be looking for funding for, and I think it can come up as a discussion under the CIP. Well, actually, I mean, we can take care of that one now with respect to Woodland. Um, yeah, we so we did run a we ran it's been through the traffic calming process. Um, we've identified a solution for it. We had funding, um, some lots of funding from local transportation capital improvement funding from the state, uh, that was identified for Woodland Avenue for some pavement rehabilitation that in the end was not feasible from our end, and then we ended up doing it through uh, other means to the region and we um, have got approval to fund the traffic calling on Woodland Avenue with that funding to re reallocate it. So we are moving forward. We've gotten proposals from uh, um, consultants to get that design together and get that going. So we hope to get that. With that process, we're probably maybe late next year, you know, middle of summer, a little bit later, or it might be the year after, but yes, we will. Uh, you know, that's moving forward. We expect that that's, you know, a way we're actually trying to leverage grant funding to help our traffic on the program. Thank you. Um, thank you. I, I want to go back to the, because I'm not quite um, clear on the prototype is number two. So it's just a matter of when they did the study that there was a discrepancy in one pay grade. And it, if it, that was the case, did we move that pay grade up? Did we compensate the individual? Yes. And moved them up. Yes. And that's sufficient for the employee and the director. Do no. they believe? No. So, is there any other um, exception to the rule about maybe realigning the position to be something else, or do you have to get union approval in order to do this? To union, do so. Union approval. So, in this case, you want to help support this individual, but the union is. Now the union was in agreement with the change that was that was made and the study that was that was made. Wait, they they are in agreement with the moving up one yes. step and not change reclassifying the position. No, everything that was done the union was in agreement with. No, but my question is, if the director feels like it should be a, a different position, why can't we reclassify it to the position to support the individual that? Is currently doing the work. Well, is my question because it's more complicated than that. 
uh, other departments also have employees. In fact, I, I, I pulled that budget modification that Dan had in because I, I heard from other departments uh, and, and reclassification really shouldn't be done through the budgeting process. It's a scientific process. And from a policy basis, what we asked the council for is give us the funds in order to do a study. And the study should be comprehensive. But at least five positions we thought were so egregiously underrated, including uh, Yvette, we at least partially addressed it. But even then, the consultant said, you really should look at all of up to employees rather than just even the five. But if we know that that is it, right? And I just, like, if we know that this person is in the position and they're doing good work and the director is recommending one thing, why not? Because we talk about retention and being able to, to, to keep employees. Would the person have to go get a, another job? And I don't want to get into day-to-day -day hiring or anything. I just want to get to the... Yeah, my answer, like the policy. My answer is that it probably is a union uh, issue because my first position would be with, with, with this position would be this is the second largest department in the organization, police department being the being the largest. Um, police department has actually an administrative support position that is in the management level which is an un unusual, it's called a senior administrative assistant. Um, not a union position. For the second largest department and for all that they do, my position is probably that it should be a similar position uh, to what uh, the police department has, but the union would kick and scream because it would mean a loss of a position for them, and that's just the way that they look at it. They look at things. So, can I ask a question? Why, again, because I'm sure this person supports all 18 members of this department, yes, and it's, making sure it's that highly of, everybody highly. is on the straight and narrow. And so, I don't want to push the issue too much, but why don't we just create a, a, a executive management position and then have the person apply for the position, and then the clerk typist remains vacant and I know there's, I don't want to be anti-union, but there's ways around and loopholes around making sure that. Um, it is an option. That's yeah, just, I, I don't want to belabor the point. It is yeah. an option, but it would come with some consequence. Okay, thank you. No, I just have a brief follow up question to that. And I guess this is one of the, the questions when we were going through this process, the last budget cycle. And obviously, I believe it's going to, well, the approach that we took from a policy standpoint, I believe it's going to have some ramification i believe is a conundrum that we're putting ourselves in ourselves in because we went ahead and did for a certain group of individuals that are not in that category classification and i could you know i could foresee that that's going to cause us some problems because you got to believe the the union are looking at everything what we do, the decisions we make, and why do we raise this person's salary here or there for the right reasons or not, they're going to be looking at that and they're going to use that as a negotiation strategy, right? And I think this one, this situation is a perfect example where this individual is supporting an entire uh, department, but is not in the classification that they should be in. So I believe we may potentially have some issues with that, but um, this is where sometimes I believe we have to kind of think, kind of slow down and think across the board how this will impact the organization. But um, it's definitely something that I believe the, um, we're going to have to deal with as we go through negotiations and so on, because they will use this as a, a negotiation strategy. Thanks.
Um, the colitis. Well, uh, thank you uh, for giving me that little brief moment to uh, regather my thoughts. Um, I, I, my, it's more of a statement than a, than anything else, and uh, it, it pertains to the Woodland Avenue calming. Um, so I guess the first a question, then a statement. Did it, so I live on Prospect Street. Did it go through the same process where you came up with a plan and then you sent it to everybody who lived on Woodland and got back? Because I'm getting feedback from people on, I'm getting the opposite feedback from what Tony's getting, I'm getting feedback from, from people on Woodland Avenue that they've seen the plan. They don't agree with the plan. They don't want the street torn up again for X number of months because it's been torn up and it's been torn up and it's been torn up and it's been torn up, that they don't want to go through a major reconstruction, have all these traffic coming things put in when we could do it with just a little bit more police presence. Well, I mean, that's a discussion I think that we need to have with the council, probably not the thing for that in the early discussion with respect to that. I mean, that was my plan, was not to bring that, necessarily bring that up tonight, but bring it up with with the discussion from that standpoint, because we've got some of that feedback too. Okay. And, but yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, DPW, the team. We appreciate all of your work and great presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I, I would like to um I'm going to take a break, but I, I would like to make this introduction or transition for the CIP presenters. Um, I didn't get to go into the CIP as much as I wanted on the opening night. Um, we've got a lot to cover. Um, I am asking, and this is to help you all monitor how long you want to be here, but Thursday is. Is, is important and I've we've got a lot to cover on Thursday and I've got a lot more information to give you to help with your deliberations so it's very important that we get through the CIP and in the back of your book there is uh, this single page which I call it a cheap sheet the full, the full CIP it's $81 million in needs of the community in the back of your CFP, right? It's only one sheet. Um, the only projects that we're going to go over, you see these blue, this blue coding, it means something. It coincides with critical in your index at the bottom of the page. So these are the projects that we consider to be most critical. Uh, you see the total being requested is almost $10 million, $9.8 million, so $10 million of that $81 million. So your presenters are only going to go over these projects. If you want to keep tab, you could make marks if you've got priorities, even though they're going to be referring you to the pages in the book, which is also listed on this sheet. So I think it's a good cheat sheet. I have talked about 500,000 that I'm recommending. That's just from the general fund. At the bottom of the page, the very last two notes, uh, we do have other funding, uh, which totals around $3.3 .3 million. A lot of that can be used only for specific projects that you see uh, they have an X by it, according to the funding source. Um, so we are looking at an allocation of approximately close to $4 million, $3.7 million. So it is more than the, than the half a million because of the state formula that we that we get. A lot of it now is the road repaving. So we don't have excess funds. Um, but it's important that we get through all of these. And I've asked the presenters to be succinct in what they present because you do have it here. So they're not gonna do much more than refer you to the page and then you'll be able to ask questions um part of what i'm going to be presenting to you tomorrow is um is a revised balance sheet and one of the reasons for the balance sheet revision is because of an error that i made that i talked about a few meetings ago a one percent error but a one percent error in our budget is 1.5 million dollars so the balance sheet is going to reflect that it's also going to reflect um some what i believe are some additional funding that has that is probably available based on how I believe we're going to end the uh, end of fiscal year, and I am going to go into detail of my my projections. Um, 
So when you get that new balance sheet, it's not going to be balanced as it was originally. Revenues equal expenditures. It actually is going to show revenues exceeding um, expenditures. So I know you've got some priorities. You talked about the Board of Education. You talk about the Board of Education and possibly increasing. You also have a community on the town side up to support and these investments. Board of Education is very important. The overall town budget is being reduced largely because we're not doing the level of capital projects uh, that we should be doing, which means we're going to fall further behind. So this presentation is very important. Uh, I hope um, you will scale your questions to at least stay until we're finished, because if we have any more rollover, uh, I'm afraid of um, that we're not going to get through uh, tomorrow. If, if you all haven't noticed, we also, uh, Nancy is here, but uh, the income finance director uh, was sick uh, tonight, so she wasn't available. I, I haven't had a chance to talk with her. Um, hope she'll be available on, on Thursday, but that could be um, uh, a big loss of still sick on Thursday, but usually we have a computer and keeping up with those kind of those kind of things. So we really need to get as much done uh, this evening and finish CIP. We've got a big night on Thursday. So there's no it is for it is for revenue loss. That's as far as we've done into categorizing. That's the way we did it last year, uh, and that's the way it is showing this year. It is a revenue supplement. Are, are we are we becoming dependent on the ARPA? No, because I think if you look at the example from last year when we put in $4.6 million, our tax base has grown. There's no reason to think that our tax base isn't going to continue to grow because we also have revaluation coming up. And what revaluation means is we like five years behind what uh, real estate in particular actually is. And we know that five years, in the last five years, the national uh, real estate is up there. I, I hear that, but my concern is that, like, yeah, we take it as revenue loss, but the revenue loss should somehow fund only one time project because it doesn't, and it goes into like salaries or something else that's um, current and year on year. That's budget gap that we have to yeah. on road fund. So I just wanted to be clear that that money is yeah. geared towards only one time project so that next year when we find the budget, Whoever is the town manager doesn't tell us that we have to, whoever's here tells us that we have to come up with the $1.5 million because it went to something that was recurring. I understand. I understand and I agree. Okay, we're going to take a five minute recess um, and we'll reconvene at 825. Or huh? Yeah, the first night. He, he has said that he believes he can reduce his sum, so that may be an adjustment that we're able to make. Yeah, that's you all's call. Thank <laughs> you.
Right, right. Yes, yeah, right. All right, who's going to lead off? We're going to go pretty much in the order of that sheet, and it'll be page by page of the document. I just here. <laughs> Or who can I do the board? Um, Dan? Oh, okay. Hey, okay, welcome. All right, we're going to get started. So we have quiet in the chain and the room. We're going to start with the Board of Education. And if you just grab the mic right next to you, that'll be, yeah. Thank you. All right. Good evening, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Penny Wallach, Director of Facilities for Bloomfield Public Schools. Um, Mr. Guzman was going to attend tonight, but there are um, two Board of Education committee meetings, so uh, I'll be doing the uh, Board of Education's presentation for our portion of the community that um, Before you uh, are the five most critical projects, uh, capital projects that we are requesting funding for fiscal year 24. Um, what page are you on? Page. I don't have the page. You're on page 13. I think you're on page 13. 13. 13. Right. Page 13. So on yeah, page 13, you. you see the five most critical projects in blue that we just identified, and then all of the others, and it's going to go over just the five most critical, starting on page 15. All right. Um, Board of Education Central Office Fire Alarm System Upgrade. Uh, this fiscal year, we were um, allocated uh, $7,000 to do the design um, to upgrade the central office fire alarm system. Uh, this amount that is uh, budgeted for next fiscal year would be the implementation uh, of that fire alarm system. The fire alarm system is from 1987, um, and it is desperately needed to provide adequate coverage uh, in the building and uh, to be able to support it because parts are no longer available for that system. So it's a life safety uh, project and it is a, a critical one. Uh, second uh, critical project is vehicle replacement of one of our facilities vehicles. This was originally funded, uh, I believe in fiscal year 21-22. Uh, but the price of vehicles went up substantially during the pandemic, and honestly, I don't know that it was the right amount uh, even before the pandemic, uh, so we were not able to get that vehicle. Um, those funds are sitting uh, aside, so the 26 five for that vehicle replacement is the balance of what would be needed um, to replace that vehicle. Uh, third project, um, and I'm sorry, I'll get the page number. 17. Yep, 17. Uh, third project is uh, Board of Ed Central Office, North Windows and Abatement, um, safety and environmental issue, as well as an energy efficiency issue. Uh, windows from 19. 7, 1958, they cracked. They have hazardous materials on them. Uh, they're very poor condition. Um, it's it, it probably should have been done a long time ago, and it's been um, it's been on the list for for close to ten years, if not longer. But it hasn't been funded. Um, so this is a critical critical project uh, for both health, safety, environmental, and uh, energy efficiency. Uh, fourth critical item, uh, which is on page 18, is district-wide security camera upgrades. Uh, there is one change to this project as it was submitted 
uh, back in December. Uh, and that change is that in early February, Governor Lamont um, released a school security, uh, two school security grants, and um, we are applying for those. So originally we had no grants to fund any of the cameras. Um, the reimbursement rate will be equal to what uh, what Bloomfield would get for school construction, uh, which would be 50%. So we get 40% from the state if we were building a new school, 50% for general construction. This would be eligible for 50% reimbursement uh, from the state. So uh, we're in the process of applying for that grant. It will be submitted on or before uh, April 28. Uh, this is desperately needed. Um, as I said a year ago, um, all of the schools need updated cameras. The largest schools, Carmen A. Race and Bloomfield High School, have large areas of, especially outside of the buildings, that never had cameras. Um, and this is a, a very desperately needed uh, project that we go update old analog cameras, which are becoming more obsolete. It would enable us to do facial recognition when visitors come in, uh, to capture their uh, images when they come in. Um, we would be adding uh, cameras inside the building where there's poor coverage and, and on the exterior of the buildings as well. Uh, the only mention is the uh, central office portion of the cameras would not be eligible for the state reimbursement. The state, reimburse, the state grant um, is for school buildings only, not uh, administrative. And then the last project, which is going to be on page 19, is uh, the initial uh, investigation and redesign at Wintonbury Early Childhood Magnet School for a number of very serious um, architectural failing issues on the outside of the building. Um, there is bluestone uh, uh, on the veneer uh, on the outside of the building that is falling off. Uh, there's flashing that's falling off. Um, there's been ongoing issues in the courtyard. Um, and so, uh, unfortunately, the amount of time um, from when we could have gone after um, either the architect, the contractor, subcontractors, um, you know, in Connecticut, I believe the uh, statute of limitations is seven years. Um, that has passed. Um, and so we are left with, with dealing with this. It's, it's, it's a very uh, concerning issue um, that I've spent a lot of time on, and it's going to require hiring um, an architect who can do like a forensic type investigation to understand what failed, to be able to understand how to fix it. Um, this could be eligible, um, perhaps, for school construction. However, I'm trying to fast track this because um, of how critical it is. So, um, you know, the school construction um, process is lengthy. We have to submit um, before June 30th. It doesn't get recommended to the General Assembly till February. Um, and then the, the funding isn't released. Really, you know, the governor's priority is released until the following summer. This can't wait. Um, this has to be started immediately. Um, so those are the five projects that I'm presenting to you. Mayor, I would like to pause here. We're going to have the rest of the panel present, but Todd Spinney is here, and I wouldn't want to keep him uh, for all of the town projects. Uh, we'd like to open it up for questions now. Okay, so we're going to have some discipline as we go around for questions. Um, we're going to allow two questions to get to your point. Uh, we're not going to have, this is not a deliberation session. This is not to express our opinions. We have to get through the hour. And so two questions each, and I'm happy to kind of help move along. Um, Councilor Mayor. Yeah, I have one question. 
uh, on the vehicle, was there a chance for you to hide room? They had room in advance. Um, what would that cost? I have to get started. Um, so our the Board of Education's fleet does not have, presently have hybrids. Um, the pricing that I secured for this uh, several months ago was just based on a conventional vehicle, um, but I can look into that. We're going to have to have some discipline here. I'm sorry. Well, just, was that? They, they, don't, they don't have a pivot right now. They just started with electrics, but they, they, they're seeing it. Yeah, not 26,000. All set, sir? All right, Councillor McClary, and then we're just going to write down the line. Great, thank you. Um, the uh, went uh, went to the early learning center yes. uh, facade. Does it pose health and safety risks to the children? Um, in my opinion, it, it may because there's been uh, interior mold that we've had to deal with uh, from the roof leaks, and because of the bluestone failing it allows rodents to get in behind it so my second question final question is this just a study to bring solve the uh the, the short term to solve it short term to look for the long-term solution both so they would determine what failed why it failed and then they would provide a redesign that we could then go out to bid and and you know, hire someone to implement the, the, the fix. Deputy Mayor. Yeah. Okay, Thank we're you. good. Okay. Uh, just one quick question. I think this is for the town manager. And I, I may know the answer to this, but I'm not sure. But my question is with respect to the building of the Board of Ed, is there a capital building plan? And do we have anything in the works to relocate or do something with that building? Because I'm I want to know if we're putting money into it, significant money. Uh, is there a plan in the near future to relocate or to have a new space for the Board of Ed? And I, I want to know that before I start coming up with ways in which to allocate funding for the Board of Ed, particularly that building. Yeah, this is one where I think we we have we have kicked it down the road, you know, talking about consolidation, whether uh, administratively or um, building wise, uh, consolidating with the with the Board of Education. I know it was um, Councilor Curtin's uh, main thesis last year, probably why um, I didn't consider doing more, but we simply don't have the um, relationship that is that is needed. Um, you know, I'm sorry, the relationship with who? With the board on an ongoing basis that is, that is needed. Um, one thing that I would really concern, and I think I've said this to the mayor uh, before, and I, and I think administration would be more apt to follow the lead, but administration and education subcommittee, as we call it, but we always focus on administration and not the education side. And I hope in the future that we'll start inviting them and have agenda items to address these issues, but we're falling short right now. So there is no plan to answer your question. Thank you. Um, so my question uh, brings back to um, the, I think this is the second request that uh, Councillor Merrick brought up. Um, this, this number that you, that you guys, you know, configured here, is this based off of, I'm assuming that's based off of a new vehicle. Have you guys considered um, purchasing used in order to uh, person used still under factory warranty because I, I do know of two other, um, the Board of Education in Windsor and uh, in Jamoki. Uh, actually, I had the privilege to sell them um, a used under factory warranty vehicle that uh, allowed them to save quite a bit of money. Have, have we looked into any of them? I'm not saying buy from me, <laughs> but. But those those possibilities are out there. Um, I haven't looked at that. Um, we do have the, the vehicles in our fleet that are used far less. Our, our residency officer, my vehicle, our um, second uh, or passed on police vehicles. You know, uh, our residency officer is driving like a 94, 95 Ford Taurus. So we've got in, in our fleet 
for the vehicles that aren't out there plowing, you know, we're doing essential work. We've got, um, you know, vehicles that have been cycled through the town. Um, but as far as looking for that, for this vehicle, I haven't, but I can, so if there's an opportunity for that. Yeah, I think, I think it may help because there's, you know, 20, you know, 2021, 20, 2022 off lease for utility vehicle, Chevy utility vehicle that you can purchase still under factory warranty certified pre-owned. Okay. So I, I would say something to look into. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to be brief. I think a town manager touched on it, and it's definitely something that I brought up uh, the last budget cycle. And I mean, looking at the the five items that you outline here, I I'm definitely in support of four and ten because those are critical. I mean, they're all critical, right. but I could see the two that definitely needs to move forward. We're talking two twenty five, one twenty five k. And that leaves us with the seven uh, hundred eleven thousand five hundred. And once again, I believe we dropped the ball on this. When I say lead the town, yeah. because I think we have to lead on this. Obviously, there've been you know areas where folks feel that hey, we we want our space, but we can't think like that. I think we have to look at it from a holistic standpoint. How we can continue saving the taxpayers. And this is something I believe that should have been part of a lot of these buildings that we're throwing up. How could we garner space for the Board of Ed? And we got to think about it that way, because once again, we could say, yes, we're going to move ahead and invest all of this, but that's the short-sighted, right? Yes. Uh, and we're looking at that space off of Blue Hills. It's prime real estate, in my opinion. Uh, so uh, those are my comments, and it's nothing new. Uh, but that's the way we have to move as far as uh, an organization. So thanks. And, and I don't disagree with that. If I could take one moment to just offer some other things when you think about that that property. Um, you know, some of the pluses are the town's owned it since 1957 or 58. So there's no land acquisition. There's no, no building, a new building. Um, we also have a community solar farm in the back that has utility easements. Um, you know, for the next 20 years or so, uh, the north side of the lot was wetlands. Um, and also, I think this is also important, um, during the pandemic, because we had a surplus that particular year, we opted to address three projects that had gone unfunded for, I think, 12 of them. Asbestos tile, floor tile abatement, half of a roof replacement, and, and a partial paving of the parking lot, which was, you know, a disaster. So we've spent in the last two years with our own funds, um, probably, you know, five or six hundred thousand dollars. So just, you know, take that into consideration. And just a quick response to what you just said. Yeah. And like I said, the pandemic has shown us we can move in a different space, right? And we can have satellite location a lot of major organizations are doing that yes you know and i believe you know it's always this thing about central office and it's a a very valuable point by many and that's what you save there's you know i don't want to hear that oh we don't want to do that no if we're going to invest more into our schools we have to find ways to shrink that operating costs and a lot of it is in you know building and space and all of that stuff so we have to think the future, not just you know, primitively the way that we've done things from that standpoint. So I understand what you're saying, but I'm looking. This is the way we should move. Understand. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Just down the line, if anyone has a question, and then we'll just have to go. Just a quick um, procedural question: They will be here tomorrow. Board of education. The yeah, the 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 people that are presenting the CIP will they be here for deliberations tomorrow? Thursday. 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 Yes, all staff will, okay. will be here on Thursday. Okay. Oh my God. Not Board of Education. Unless you want me to. If you want me to, I'll be here. It's yeah. important. I think it's important. I mean, just, I think we'll need you. I think we'll need you. Thank you. Then I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> Question. Just uh, just kind of a, to reiterate kind of Shamar's point, I would definitely look into a used vehicle. However, to give Shamar some information, in my experience, you guys are buying through the state program technically, typically, and typically 
it's like 30 to 40% off sticker price. So oh, it's a significant exactly. savings back to the town by buying a brand new vehicle through the state program. So. Sure. Very sure. Councilor Harrington. Uh, question in reference to the uh, item number three. So I I saw that it was introduced last last budget session. Yeah. And there was there was no movement. Um, is the majority of that cost associated with the abatement? Because it seems like a a pretty high price tag, and it's not even the whole building. No. It's, it's actually a little bit less than half. Um, and, and that's another consider, but, but not to get off track, but that's another consideration. If you sold the building, you'd still have to do the abatement anyway, um, because nobody, to, sell it. to sell it, nobody's gonna buy it with the hazardous material. Um, I don't have the exact breakdown. I can get it for you. Um, I, I believe it's close to half. The, the price of glass has also skyrocketed. So the windows, uh, from when we originally budgeted it have gone up. Um, but there are there are three elements of hazardous with, with that material, and that's what makes the disposal of it um, significant. Phil has a second question. I give them a second question. It's important. No, I just it's, like, it's, a, it's an important question. Like at a time. Sorry, my. Uh, it's an yeah, important but we question. Have to get to our point because we have. All yeah. Those. So, so in your budget, I noticed that the uh, the 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 board of ed's budget, the superintendent has a non lapsing capital, non recurring. Um, last year was about four hundred thousand dollars. This year is about uh, three hundred thirty thousand dollars. If we don't fund any of these pro the projects that you listed as critical, would you take some of that money to fund capital improvement? Well, I can't, I can't, you know, that, that answer would have to come from the superintendent, but the 1% set aside, I can just tell you this, we've had to dip into it this year three times um, for a, a serious fire alarm issue and, 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 and some exterior doors that posed uh, safety concerns, security concerns. Um, so we've been dipping into it. Um, I, I think like when it comes to the security cameras, we're not going to let this grant slip away from us where we could get 50%. And, and I think the answer is, at least for the cameras, if we have to dip into that, um, if the council doesn't fund it, um, I don't think we can afford to miss this grant. Um, beyond that, for the other items, I, I can't say. It's the, only, it's the only contingency we have for, for facilities issues. And so if we complete it and we have emergencies that come up, that, that come up in any building, then we're gonna come back to the town um, to fund it where we've been able to fund some of these emergencies with that 1% set aside. Thank you. Well, just a quick question. Yeah. Will the, the camera upgrades be tied into the police system, the town system? Will they Will there be one interface? Um, it wasn't the plan. There's two different security grants, and one of the grants specifically um, from Homeland Security deals with uh, integrating with the police department. And so that will be two way radios. Um, so schools can contact the police immediately. So cell phones were unavailable. Um, the cameras, we were not. Uh, the cameras are still um, standalone from the cameras. Um, and if the police department needs access, which they you know routinely do for incidents that occur in parking lots and things like that, then we typically provide that video to the police department. <laughs> But we couldn't just, why couldn't we just implement that all together for you, funding? You could, that would just be a policy thing between the town and the superintendent um, and board. Okay. Uh, all right. Presently, they're just two standalone systems. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that's something we can think about if this is, uh, the council has an appetite, which I'm hearing, to prioritize this as a potential um, modification or um, CIP piece. So I don't know if two days is enough, but. Oh, come on. Yet another, oh, somebody had a question. I said, oh, thank you. Um, I would uh, strongly um, support the security camera upgrades, right? With everything that's going on in the world, I think it's extremely important. Um, I do think it's also extremely important to make sure that it's connected to the police department, 
right? Because if something is happening, you want to make sure that the police is there right away, that we don't have lags and things like that. So I don't know if that's an additional cost, not quite sure, but I think um, <laughs> making sure that we're investing this money, that we're investing it properly. And, and as you said, there is a potential where you can get half of this money by grants. So I think if we're going to do it, we should do it properly. But I do think that this is extremely important. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you so much. So it sounds like we do, we do have a critical action item that we should produce by Thursday. What is it? What does that relationship look like? What does that deliverable look like to have the the town and the board of ed on the same page as it relates to we're gonna if we fund this particular camera um, CIP piece, are the police going to be integrated or the interface? And I think we would want to know that prior to that. Right. So I'll bring that to the superintendent tomorrow and um and and let the administration know that we need great, you know, we need some feedback for or by Thursday. Okay. Thanks. And Thursday's meeting is at what time? 6 30. 6 30. Uh, we have a question. No, this is, um, and something to, to consider. You have to understand with the schools and the privacy issue, that may be a stumbling block because I don't believe that you can interface that because that becomes very problematic and sensitive with young children and so on. Yeah, I think the police department has asked to it. They, you know, we're talking about Homeland Security. They fit under that particular spectrum. Who they have to follow no, just just something to But that's a good point. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much. All right. Where it is just a quick time check. Eight fifty four. Who's up next? Okay. okay, we've got the panel here, and they know their project. We're going to go pretty much in order. We're on page thirty four. Okay, we're doing well. Thank you, Council, for your cooperation. Uh, <laughs> we're doing well. All right. Page twenty four. Thirty four. Oh, thirty four. Excuse me. Thirty four. I'm just going to ask you to just switch. The, can we hand Nancy the mic? Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you. We're on page 34, and the first project under infrastructure is the October 2024 reval. Um, we're mandated by the state every five years to conduct a revaluation of uh, the property. The last reval was in 2019. Um, even though this is October 1st, 2024, the bulk of the work is done in fiscal. 2024. So this is a state mandate. This would be a statistical revaluation as opposed to the um, physical revaluation that happened in 2019. You may have had cards in your mailbox, mailers, people knocking on your door and inspection. This would be a statistical reval. Um, but it is required by law. It's not cheap. Um, and the work really needs to be done. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because there's a lot of other projects. But Vincy, who you've met before, is here to answer any questions if you may have any on just the rebound. The, oh, do you want to do questions, time. Madam Mayor? Or are, we, are we just taking words through the infrastructure block all together? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, let's do that. It's only this one project. Oh, she's only this yeah, one. Yeah, she just has the one project. Any questions for Vincy? Councilor Mayor? We, why are we putting it in this year's budget? Why can't we wait and start paying in next year's budget? Because the work needs to be done before July 1st of um, 2025. Or That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Vincy. Okay, um, second project is uh, roadway, capital roadway improvements. Um, that is the, you know, the, the, the paving program essentially that is administered through Public Works. Um, that project or that particular item has historically been funded through the um, and is eligible for funding from the municipal grants and aid funding from the state of Connecticut. Any questions on? Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're going through. Yeah. Juniper. Next one is Juniper Road Drainage. Um, this is the project where the first half was funded. Well, the first half was funded last year. There's actually a smaller project funded couple years before that, um, it's a 3,000 foot road, no, really no formal drainage except one catch basin down at the bottom. Uh, drainage issues, the first, we did a small project of uh, an underdrain near Runda Lane intersection that 
was very effective in dealing with uh, icing that problem that we had there, although it still exists to a lesser degree. And it just, a long roadway with no, no drainage. Again, last year, um, 400,000 was allocated for the design and for the lower half of the road, this is this is look, seeking the 300,000 to be able to do the, um, the second half between uh, Runda Lane and Simsbury Road. Uh, the project after that was a high hill road flood mitigation. Again, we uh, experienced some significant flooding during the uh, storms a couple of years ago. Uh, there's a there's a pipe that runs kind of through the back woods, if you will, out there that that is undersized. Uh, water backs up from that pipe. Um, there's a little bit of a hill that it goes under, so that the the real relief available to us is to put another pipe in and that is what this is looking looking to do is put a second pipe in to try to mitigate that flooding on the road and it affects one house next project traffic calming maple avenue traffic calming measures this is a traffic calming project through the program there's two aspects to it We're and having a tough time figuring out why it would be getting worse. Um, and so this would be trying to look at that and, and to see what might be available for solutions um, if, if we should want to move forward with that. Uh, next one, Blue Hills Complete Streets. This was a, a match project we did put in for a, with, with some other communities in the Capital Region uh, Council of Governments. Uh, on a, a federal grant application that we did not get. This was kind of anticipating that if we were to get that, that we would need match monies for that. Um, that did not happen. So this basically could be taken out um, of your, and it will come back at some point potentially in the future. Um, Mountain Avenue bridge replacement. Again, we this has been on the books for a while, but we do have to, there's a small bridge we have to replace. Um, and this is this is funding to do design for that to get that underway. I think we got the design in place, and we could look at potentially some grant funding with that. But we would at least get us get us down the path to design and to be able to look into that as the money we're looking for there. Um, the next one is a lots of design match again. The lots of local uh, transportation capital improvement program from the state. Uh, they do solicitations every two years, uh, but. The, the way the program works is the, the grant pays for 100% of the uh, construction. The town, the municipalities are responsible for the designs. This is a project, you know, potentially we put in for one project this year um, for uh, traffic calming on School Street, as well as sidewalks on School Street and some bus stop improvements on School Street, as well as uh, re a reworking of the intersection of School Street and Wittenberry, a realignment of the Wittenberry leg on that. Um, we, we did talk to the state about possibly putting a roundabout at that, that intersection. They didn't find it warranted. And this is what they suggested we should do, that they thought this, based on their warrants, this was the solution, which, which will improve it. It's not quite as nice as a roundabout. And then the other thing is um, at Seabury, 
with their with their recent work a couple of years ago, they used to have a bus stop on their on their site, uh, which no longer was feasible there. So they've moved out to the roadway, but there's no improvements there for the number of people they've got that use it. So it would also be to look to get a, use lots of grant to put a, a actual formal bus stop at Seabury. Um, and the number there could be reduced to 200,000 because in the end, because we didn't do the other project, uh, that's about what would be needed to do that design. So that could be reduced to 200,000. The Wadhams Road culvert, again, this is a second part of an earlier project. Um, there was undermining at the outlet, so we took care of that a couple of years ago. But this is this is the pro the culvert is undersized. We do get flooding in the you know behind that that doesn't reach one house. So this was a, a project to put in a second pipe at that at that culvert crossing. That takes us to the guardrail replacement. Guardrail replacement is shown on page forty four. Um, we request twenty five thousand every th every third fiscal year, and this project is required to restore safety and reduce significant liability should an accident occur in one of these areas. Um, we have approximately four miles of guardrail around town. A lot of it is the uh, antiquated wood post and cable guide rail, which is no longer an acceptable roadside barrier. So every third year we take our allocation of $25,000 and we we're making progress towards upgrading the guide rail system that's throughout the town. And oh, just another thing, the funding is available as this transportation related funding is available through the municipal, the state municipal grants and aid funding due to its being transportation related. Um, the next truck project is another traffic calming initiative associated with Prospect Street Walk and Pedestrian Improvements. Uh, there are two parts to, to, to Prospect Street traffic calming. Again, this went through the process. One, one part is, the, again, the in-road, which is going to be, for the most part, uh, uh, speed, speed tables. And we've got money in the budget for that in our traffic calming budget. So we're going to be looking to do that this spring. Uh, the second step was was uh, sidewalks, closing the gap. So we have sidewalks on one side of the street. Again, in addition to the traffic, you know, just getting people off the street to walk. This is also part of the, the Towns Complete Streets program that we have adopted. So this is looking for $300,000, as well as adding a crosswalk mid block since it's such a long ways to with, uh, you know, with a, a beacon, a flashing beacon to get across the street. So that's what that project is. Um, the drainage that you're going to have with that. Yeah, uh, page 46. In 1977, the town had a townwide drainage study done by an engineering consultant. Um, it is, the plan is 45 years old and is out of date. Um, it does not take into consideration improvements and developments implemented since 1977. We would like to update that drainage study so we have a more comprehensive uh, snapshot of the drainage infrastructure and so we can identify where we have potential problems and where we need, need to make potential fixes. Um, a possible source of funding is the Connecticut Urban Act funding. It's very competitive and it's a limited in availability. Um, and it, 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 it's a possible funding source but undetermined at this time. Um, the next uh, project, which was, has been, you know, started when engineering was part of land use, but it's a land use di data digital conversion. And so now it's a two, two, two uh, department, I guess, project. Again, this just has to do with the number of maps and physical um, records that these departments have that they deal with with the public that you know are just in folders. The maps themselves are starting to deteriorate. And this was just a project to try and get them scanned in so we could deal with them uh, as electronic documents, which, which would allow us to serve the public much better, which would preserve the data, allow us to create more space in town hall as the land use department itself is getting packed in there because the physical documents could go into storage. Um, it's something that's really needed. Again, we've been asking for it for five or six years now, I think, um, and it's easy to push off, but, you know, the longer we push it off, the worse the situation gets. So it's really, you know, it's nice to get this, this project underway. Um, West Dudley Town Road Reconstruction. Yep. So West Dudley Town Road Reconstruction, page 48 of your book. Um, 
So West Dudley Town Road reconstruction would be from Philly Street to the north to Blue Hills Avenue. Um, this section of road currently has no drainage installed at all. Um, there are isolated low points and high points. Um, it is an industrial road. It is beginning to unravel. Um, it needs to be, it needs to have drainage uh, installed and probably widened. There's no pedestrian corridor on the road. Um, and the project kind of gets a little bit above the capabilities or, or outside the the capital road maintenance program. It's not a maintenance problem. This is a this is a, a, a deep dive reconstruction project. So we requested um, 150,000 in this fiscal year for the design with um, additional funding for, uh, uh, allocated for fiscal year 26 for construction. Um, just another note there, there's a large now corporate customer who is looking at building a building on, on uh, this portion of West Dudley Town Road and the condition that the road is in with it with more truck traffic, it's it's really just going to unravel quickly on uh, the next couple of years. Um, the project is 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 on uh, uh, street eligible for state local transportation capital improvement program funding. That's undefined at this time, and you know possibly uh, some C Connecticut Urban Act funding, which we'll apply for, but we don't have any any uh, commitments at this point. Uh, the urban forestry assessment three phase 49. So right now we're doing the urban forestry program with our tree inventory within our road right of ways. Um, the, the second phase uh, would be similar. Um, this would be um, uh, for our town buildings uh, in our in our in our developed properties. Um, there is no identified sources of funding for this available for this project at this time. Hazardous tree removal, uh, page 50 of your book. Um, so hazardous tree removal, again, um, this is eligible for uh, municipal grants and aid funding because this item would be for any hazardous trees that are uh, adjacent to roadways, so transportation related. And this basically came out of um, the Emerald Ash Borer, which came into the state in 2012. Um, and we have um, uh, a significant amount of trees that we've been addressing. Probably 80% of the trees that we have removed adjacent to roadways are dead ash trees right now. And um, so those trees are dying or are dead now. Um, and the majority of that funding would be used to remove those dead trees and which have become roadside hazards. Um, next one is just the general traffic calming program. Um, again, this is, you know, is, is basically to take care of some of the, the issues that come up with smaller street streets. Um, if we do need any kind of consulting on anything. Um, and, you know, we did the, the proposal, like it, it came up earlier. We did get 50,000 last year, 50,000 the year before. We looked to reduce it to 30. Um, the reason I guess for that, we had discussions internally as we put our budget together. And really, we looked at some of, you know, the, as there's a number of other projects, as we identified here, that we're looking for funding and for traffic calming on. And I, I think it was just kind of a, uh, you know, not be too greedy, maybe, a proposal. But <laughs> so that that was the, that was the reasoning. That's only, you know, I mean, that really was kind of the reason on that one. The sidewalk repair replacement, we're looking for $50,000 this year. Um, and yeah. we've been we've been requesting that and, and generously getting it from the council. This is for um, and th this that's not in the book. Yeah, that's not in the book, by the way. That was mistakenly omitted. So there's not an individual page. It was yes, it was in part of the uh, the appendices that were handed out. Um, so this is for existing sidewalks in town, which are in deteriorating condition. We've been going through for the last three years. And spending that fifty thousand dollars making sidewalk repairs, either removing and replacing squares. So it's it's not long stretches or sidewalk projects per se, but it's piecemeal maintenance of sidewalks. And we're due to start shortly after April first with the monies that we have for this fiscal year. And then the last item 
under infrastructure is the streetlight LED retrofit. So um, surprisingly to me, I think we've discovered over the last seven years that we as a town do not own our streetlights. They're owned and maintained by Eversource. However, however, we do own three strings of streetlights through the years. I'm not sure. So there's a, a, a string of lights on Griffin Road North, Griffin Road South, and Mount Benedict Avenue, which is um, across from Cottage Grove Road along. The, there's like seven lights on that uh, adjacent to the cemetery that we own and maintain. We have separate electrical services for them. They're old. Um, they're old uh, sodium fixtures. They're not energy efficient at all. Uh, Eversource, we, we're, we're trying to get them to take them, but they're not their standard. So they're not accommodating to taking them from us. We would like to update the fixtures to LEDs to make them more efficient. So that is everything under infrastructure. Okay, we're going to move into clarifying questions, please. We're going to keep it short. I heard the certain things questions. All right, thank you. All right, first, my first question is, and I think I have a com brief comment. This is an area where I think it's kind of sticky. Uh, call it a sticky wicket because we invest, we put funding for CIP projects, but you know, year after year, they kind of sometimes linger and nothing is happening. So, quick question pertaining to FY23 that 3.9, could you are you able to summarize to say which of those projects are still on the back burner? We haven't really started to move forward. And I'll just use as an example, you know, the 600,000 for Maple Avenue and Juniper Road for the 400,000. What has been done so far with those two major <laughs> capital projects? So we we yeah. um, have in the last month gotten proposals from the uh, consultants to get those things. We, we put together the packages, got together the proposals and are getting ready to uh, issue the evaluation work and design work under those. Yeah, we're, we're not going to get into it tonight because obviously we're trying to get through this, but I think what would be helpful is for us to get a summary of saying, hey, these are ones that we can kind of, you know, shift into 2024, and we probably could kind of shift some of the 24 into 25 because this is where we can play around and save and kind of be able to do certain things that we're we're talking about in the budget. So those are just brief, but I think they're all uh, viable uh, CIP projects. The only thing is I think we need to be a little bit more nimble when it comes to what can we kind of phase out instead of leaving it in the budget and, and that kind of impacts the overall right. mill rate and all of that stuff and it kind of burdens us. So thank you. That's an excellent point, Chancellor Kurt, and I'm glad that our new uh, Assistant Director, Project Managers, hearing all of these comments, and that we got to make it more robust and make sure that the council is aware and where these projects and what's causing them to linger and that's the I mean they need to be reshuffled. Right? For instance, um, thank you, um, Madam Mayor. I uh, want to go to Jonathan as it relates to the um, the Low Hill Park. Um, uh, well, drainage, so groundwater. Um, there's about two ways to deal with groundwater. Uh, redirecting it to an open body of water, nearby open body of water, or redirecting it by piping um, to an open body of water. Um, if we know that's how we deal with groundwater, why do, why do a study to tell us that, okay, it's coming from the Northeast and we got to move it to an open body of water? Why don't we just get a contractor in there to kind of do the work and do the things that they need to do to help provide relief to the, the, the residents. And, and so pictures of every, you know, mold in basements, water in basements, uh, foundations movement, and just letters from residents and the, sick, the petition and thanks to Ms. Days Grant for sending that over to me. Um, this is this is this is a serious matter, and if I have water near my house doing that, I would be very upset because um, it it deals with the quality of life. And so, where is the sense of urgency around this? 
you know, you, you hear and see in Hartford that also Granby Street and other neighborhoods that people are dealing with this and the legislature is trying to figure out and come and support. Why don't we have that same urgency around this, this, this section of the neighborhood? Well, I think we do have a sense of urgency. I think that's part of our, you know, we're trying to make some progress and that's why we're proposing the study. Um, but the study is going to tell us that it's groundwater and that you need to use pipe, either pipes to redirect it to an open body of water or, or water without using the pipes. Yeah. Like that's how you deal with groundwater, right? Like there is... Well, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I don't disagree. I mean, I, I just, on one hand, I, and maybe part of the study is going to be, I mean, that's part of the study is, is the finding a part of the study is what the solution is and what the solution is going to cost. I mean, it, it's going in to determine, look at soil types and, and if we're going to actually, try, you know, we know the soils out there are very clay. We know people have put in under drains and have come back and said, I put this under drain in and it only helps right where the under drain is, you know, because under drains don't work the same way in clay soils as they do in sandy soils or gravelly soils. So, you know, I think, I think the scope of the solution is much more extensive than most people realize or want to realize. And I'll be honest, I don't get the impression that when I say that, People believe me. So we're going to go get a consultant to come in and look at it and come back. And, and I, I see you roll your eyes at me, but I mean, that's that's the truth because it's they're, they're in order to be effective, you know, we can be effective around houses. That's not going to help the backyards, which is where most of this started. If we're going to be effective in backyards, we're going to be putting a, a, a maze of under drains under this whole area. There's going to be a significant cost to that. We need to get in a handle on what that cost is going to be. So that's also a big part of the study. It's like you say, we could just go ahead and do it, but we need to have an idea of what the cost is before we head down that path and what the whole scope of the project is. And my final, because I know we're limited to two questions. My final question is related to uh, traffic comment. I think every meeting, and maybe the deputy mayor could correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there has been a number of complaints as it relates to uh, traffic comment. And to say that $30,000 is just the number, then we know that there has been significant, um, we almost ran out of money this year for that program. Um, is Could we figure out a formula to kind of help, like really get an estimate so that, um, you know, once this budget is passed, we really have limited flexibility to, like move money around and do things. And so I would just hope that we could find a little bit more money to support uh, the traffic comment and in the future, put together a formula to determine the need so that when we move forward and we get requests, we're not finding ourselves in a bind because we are limited to $30,000 or $40,000 or $50,000. Because once this budget is passed, if we don't go to council contingency, we don't have any other place to go to help provide relief to to residents. So I would hope to see some real number around that traffic common based on the need that you have. Fair enough. I just would point out that we've got over $800,000 worth of traffic calming improvements. Proposed. From previous years. From no, from this year. That's mm -hmm. in this year, there are traffic calming associated projects that add up to $800,000. So, let, so let me clarify when I say from previous years, it's because we identified $50,000 in, in the previous year and you went out and you collected the data and you determined that that was the need. But moving forward, right? Am I right. correct on that? We've like, actually made improvements in several parts of town and have, with, that, with, with that money, which I believe there might still be a balance in there. So we'll right, get that right. information to you. And that, 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 that $50,000, and now we, we believe it should be closer to thirty. that's kind of to administer the process of the traffic calming program. So there's mailings that need to go out. There's public meetings that need to be held. Not huge costs. I don't think it's 50. That we we kind of look at that number as the administrative cost to 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 run the program, not the construction cost. Even though we've done some minor speed bumps, some restriping, some small little low hanging fruit with it, we don't think we need fifty thousand dollars to administer the program. So that when complaints come in, we you know we have to send out mailings, solicitations, we hold public meetings. 
that's kind of what that thirty thousand dollars is. I will project like on page forty-five or page thirty-eight. Those yeah, but because so we're going to move on to the okay. next question, mm -hmm. Councillor Mohan and Deputy. Okay. Thank you, um, and John, Jonathan. I think you bring up a, a good point. Or, you know, when you were speaking, it reminded me of that uh, the Connecticut state ad for like call before you dig. Like you almost got to do your homework before you start digging and moving things around because you might just make matters worse without knowing exactly what we're doing. So it. I think you bring up a, a great point with the study. Um, my question is in terms of, I, I see with a lot of these uh, projects, there are a lot of our uh, eligible for grants. If we, if we do fund some of these projects, but then you do receive a grant, does that money then get transferred to some of these other projects or will we have a term like how, what happens to those funds? It, it depends. Like you just approved last night a transfer from one capital project to another. Right. So if we were able to get grant funds to cover the entire part or even a good part of it, and we didn't need the funds, depending on where it is, of course, because there's some restricted uses for some of these other grant funds, we would come to you and ask for a transfer to another project or a new project. Okay. So as long as it's eligible under whatever grant. Uh, okay, friends. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, this is just actually piggybacking off of Councilman Mahan's uh, question. And I'm sitting here and I'm looking at all the projects that we're looking uh, to fund. And I'm thinking about there are a lot that are municipal funding opportunities, state level funding. And I'm wondering, are we advocating and we reaching out to our legislators, you know, our, our state rep and our senators to find out the likelihood of getting funding for some of these projects? Because I really think that they could give us some good insight uh, as to how we should proceed and how we prioritize and, and sort of, you know, help let them help us get the funding that we need and find out if it's likely to get it. Uh, and I'm not trying to create extra work, but I just think that they can really be helpful if we work with them and sort of say, look, this is what we're looking to do. You know, do you, are you on this committee or is your colleague, you know, just how can we get the funding? And I, yes. Are we doing that? Yes. Um, I guess I would say, and I didn't really know how to approach that because we get into what are these same grants available for? And most of them you'll see, one of the things that's in most of them that I put in there is the Urban Act Grant. The what? Urban Act. But the thing about that is, is as, as Dan uh, alluded to earlier, it's very competitive, right, across the state. Um, while these things may be eligible, like you say, the chances of many of these projects actually scoring or being a priority enough to get funding under that is not very high. Um, you know, we look at some things of what, you know, what we're doing and try, you know, and, 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 submit them but well, our task was to say what are they potentially eligible for so that's what i did but but yeah i mean we can you know we can look at we look at those we do have some discussions that when they come to us and ask and you know about what projects they would like to support so we we, we do have that interaction okay because i'm thinking let us help you or let us work mm -hmm. together to sit down with our you know, representatives and, and senators and sort of figure out we gave a list of 10 Right. You know, can you help us? What do you think? And I think that could be helpful. Right. Okay. Going forward. Thank you. I got some air. Um, as you probably know, it's kind of a very tough question. We're trying to Thursday, I want to come up with a decision on it. Whatever happens, you're going to have the highest tax increase that we've had in the last 20 years. And that's not very popular. Um, politicians tend to try to do everything they can to avoid that. If we give the board what they're asking for and on this budget completely, we're going to be facing 10% mm. I don't think it mm. is. Yeah. So we've got to look at some ways of stop. In the past, I know you're familiar with this act because we have we felt it. Um, where we, we, some years we had zero capital budget from the other room. Uh, our budget, we did here, we had 500,000 um, anybody coming to the tax. 
And um, if we just cancel that fire and said, okay, and some things that would be dumb not to do this, that you know, have on this project. But maybe there's some things, and this is that quite a bit of thing out of all this brought up already. It's impossible to come up with a list of those projects that you haven't started. I, I know you can always, I, I will not bring up Mount Nan. I will not bring that up. <laughs> Don't bring it up. But you may have some others that is just not as a practical matter. You don't need the money for it and say, no, next year. And, and you could put that project, move that out in order to make these things so these things that it is. So the extent you can do that would really be helpful because the half a million dollars is a half a percent at least of, of uh, would be very helpful. So that's, I think, one area in the budget where, you know, I know that there's some early things in it. We're, we have a problem. Yes, and I, I believe there are some areas we can do that with, and we'll have some you have some you know, answers you for yeah, have some answers for Thursday for that. Councilman, so don't shoot me because I think I'm on the other end of the spectrum. Um, we're talking about the Laurel Park groundwater study, and we're talking about the fact that we do know that there's a problem there. And I've sat in the meetings with the frustrated residents from Laurel Park and the people that can't enjoy their backyards or don't want their kids to go outside because they may drown because of all the water that's on the property. And I know that we're trying to cut the budget, right? Because we don't want a 10%. I don't want a 10% increase. Um, I'd probably have to move out of town, but that's a whole different story. Um, but while we know that there is a problem and while we're going to do a study, which makes sense, because some of the uh, underground drainage that individual property owners have done have not worked, right? So the study, I think, is important to see if we're going to put in drainage and where it needs to go. But I think we also need to have some money to be able to address the problem because we know there is a problem. Um, be all on the town side or if the town is going to um, partner with the residents and say, uh, you know, let's try to fix this together. But I think to say we're going to, we, here's the problem, we're going to study the problem, then what, right? So while I know that we are looking at um, all the funds that's in this budget busting situation, I think it would also be prudent to think about after the study, then what? So that's just my, I, I don't want to be shot by anybody, but that's just my two cents. And, and I'm, I'm saying that to my colleagues because we're going to have to make that decision. And I know the frustration of the residents in the, in the Laurel Park area. And if someone said to me, you have this great house, you're paying all these taxes, but you can only use your front yard. <laughs> Would be like, what? What's 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 going on? So I think we have to be mindful of that as well. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Politis. Um, just a, just kind of a follow up on, on Laurel Park. Um, I've had the opportunity to get kind of intimate with Clay over the last couple of years in, in doing the construction of our new building and we had to move I can't even tell you how many hundreds of yards of clay out to just stop the groundwater from being a problem with the foundation of the new building we literally dug six foot wide trenches 40 you know 46 inches well, four feet deep trenches and the next morning we came in and there was three feet of water in there. It just, it was completely bone dry when we dug it. The next morning there was three feet of water. That's how much water that clay holds. Um, so I think that if we do a groundwater study, I think we're gonna find out that it, there's a significant amount of clay in Laurel Park. And I think we're gonna find out that it's gonna cost a boatload of money to fix. Um, so those are my concerns on that. 
Second question. My second question is, um, I see the capital municipal grant is around $3.2 million. Um, I see underneath infrastructure, the capital grant amount, if I did the quick math, is about $2.4 million of what's been next out already. I actually calculated it, and there are a couple of errors on the, the grants, but it's two point eight. Eight million dollars. Okay. So, is there anything zero. else? Because I see Laurel. So it looks like Laurel, Laurel Park, Park is not eligible. Laurel Park is not eligible. Okay, because it's X out as being eligible. I know that's one of the areas. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll but, update that. But I, but I, but I've added these numbers up. That even the ones that so I, I don't come up with three point two. I came up with another one that's not checked. Mm -hmm. I think there's two or that might be eligible okay. that aren't shown. Okay. So we'll revise this for you. Okay. So my my question is then, is there something else that's eligible? You know, what else on this list that would be possibly eligible? Would you have the next project to get it from the two point eight to three point two? So that we don't have to worry about that project All as the a priority. Boxes, you'll be able to fund other units of capital grant. I, I think just, last I year when we, just, we did more, nothing else would be eligible on this list. Okay. But I think that, the prior question. years we did, we put more money towards paving and sidewalks. Okay, that's my question. Thank you. And Nancy Morgan, just the exes and, and reconciling. Um, I'd like for you and you and Glenn to go through and as you did last year, making specific recommendations for them to give to the council. Okay, Councilor Harrington. Yes, uh, thank you. So I understand that uh, we wouldn't have all of this information right now or before Thursday relative to uh, uh, the grants that we've applied for before. How successful have we been in terms of securing? I mean, I know it's not 100%, but the likelihood of uh, Grants that we're pursuing for us to 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 help out with these costs. Well, the capital municipal grant is that's a formulary grant. That's a that formula. Most of are not competitive grants. We just get those. We get those. So those are those are solid grants. And most of it's different than last. Just to be clear. Lots of it yeah. applied for, as you approved last night, the pedestrian uh, sidewalk. One was a recent award that we were eligible that we did. Got from last. Um, I don't know other ones that we gotten recently. Something. Well, Dave was able to get one from um, for the lights. Through the Urban Act. Urban Act grant. Uh, yes. is, is, there, is there any way? Uh, at this point, I, I know for instance, the governor had these funds for for uh, all the cities relative to certain requirements. Are we still in? Uh, are we? Is it possible for us to make any further requests of our state legislators to provide any funds? No, that I don't want. Yeah, I'm not sure what's been made available from a state standpoint with respect to ARPA. We've, we've definitely looked into the federal programs. We've made a couple applications there that we have not been successful in. Um, in general, what we thought, I mean, we've had, there's been, I think, three different people who've, who've done some pretty extensive looking into the, the infrastructure, you know, the infrastructure bill from the federal government. And to be honest, the, the way those grants are set up, they aren't set up for a municipality of this size. They just aren't in, in the types of, for the most part, the types of projects we're looking at. They're also set up for projects that are farther along in their development than what we are here. You know, we, we need to set some money aside to do some planning work for, and, and significant planning work and, and concept design work for projects to really make them competitive and, and to set programs up that we show those projects being under. That's the type of thing that they fund. Um, so, you know, there, there may be a, a couple larger projects that may be on the horizon that maybe could look at some funding like that. But unfortunately, despite the fact that there's all that money out there, it just is not geared for communities of size. And that's 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 the unfortunate truth in it. Yeah. All right. 
Yeah. I mean, um, I live in the Long Park area and I know a lot of the issues that uh, my fellow neighbors are having and I commend them for what they're doing. Um, and I have a little different situation because I have a hill in the backyard and water that kind of flows down and settle. And so I go through that. But I do agree with you with the approach that you're taking to get all the information first. And this goes back to my point before, we have to avoid just plugging numbers in the budget because that affects those same neighbors when it comes to their taxes and stuff. So I think we need to be a little bit more sensitive to that, but I'm happy to see that we have funding in there to kind of get to a study to get that information that those um, residents are looking for to help mitigate because it's, uh, you know, we have a lot of seniors and stuff, and it's it's sad that they are not able to use their backyards. They're paying high property taxes, and then you wait for months and months to for that water to kind of dry out. You know, that's all they like. So I'm happy that we're moving forward, but I think overall we just have to be sensitive to just not plugging numbers in there because it affects us all. So mm -hmm. thanks. Um, thank you. I I I think um, I've heard from my colleagues that folks were suggesting that I'm saying that we don't need to study. Um, what I was asking, and I think I should be clear, and let me ask you, how do you solve the problem with removing groundwater? In general, if you're going to <clears throat> remove, I mean, it, it's what you see under drain around a foundation or in a roadway. And you put the most typical way is to put some sort of pipe pipe system in the ground that with with uh, perforated pipes that collects the groundwater and as you said, then pipes it out to either you know a storm drainage system that carries it out to or, you know to uh, an outlet or if you if you happen to have whether it be a stream or just a gully that's deep enough. You can, you know, where there's enough slope from the ground where you're going from, where you can just outlet it to the ground downstream somewhere. Um, again, that's a situation that is typically undertaken for an individual location. It's a single house, a single above a single septic system, you know, a, a roadway along a single roadway. We're looking at a situation here where we're talking, I don't know, 50 to 100 houses, maybe something like that. So you're taking that situation. And then and again, when you're just dealing with a house and sometimes you can do it in backyards and they can be effective. It's more difficult as people have found out there when you've got dealing with clay soils. So we're taking that issue and we're compounding it hundredfold, you know, and, that, and that's, a, that's something we've got to get a handle on to know what, what the scope of what we're dealing with. Thank is. you so much. Thank you. We're going to move on to public facilities. We will push through uh, through the rest of our sheet, a cheat sheet here. And so let's move right along to public facilities. Thank you for that robust conversation. So I will uh, <clears throat> refer you to page 61, the salt brine containment wall. When we initially, this was funded for $30,000 in fiscal year 23. Um, we got an estimate for the work subsequently earlier this year in December when we submit capital projects, we um, identified that we did not have enough money. After that fact, we have talked to a couple of different contractors. We've identified an alternative design. So I do feel fairly confident that we can complete this project with the $30,000 that was allocated in fiscal year 2023. 20, so I am gonna say that we are not gonna be re requesting that $10,000 at this point for, for fiscal year 24. All right, if I can bring your attention to page 64, building department remodel and the amount of $175,000. I'll try and be brief, but I do need to elaborate on these projects, page 64 and 65 especially. Um, we all know how busy the development is in Bloomfield right now. 
the last remodel at our town hall facility took place in the early 90s. So as they say, a picture can say a thousand words. If you look at this picture on page 64, what you're looking at is part of the service counter for our staff, along with um, room for our neighbors of Bloomfields to access these services. If I'm a neighbor of Bloomfield visiting town hall, visiting our busiest department, I've got less than about 60 square feet uh, to address my concerns in this department. Um, I was asked to remove half of the service desk to accommodate the assistant director position along with two other positions, uh, just to make room for cubicles. There's not even enough room for the current staff right now. They've got slightly innovative and um, ordering through transfer enterprises and a couple other businesses for compact uh, cubicles and modules to make space for their staff, but it's definitely ineffective inefficient and we're setting up barriers to our neighbors as these counter heights aren't even ADA compliant. I was going to tackle this first phase by removing half of the service counter, but we have abatement issues. There's asbestos mastic underneath the broadloom carpeting. So um, I would like to attack this as an entire project for $175,000. This will incorporate the design and complete renovation from floor to ceiling of the land uh, and building use department. Um, along with that, on page 65, the town hall ITI department renovation and the amount of $90,000. Again, please look at this picture. Um, town hall was built well before my time, but they're currently utilizing a vault. Perhaps it was for probate records. Obviously, records retention of some sort was used in this ITI space. Um, so, for instance, if I were to go in there and request services from Warren Plummer, right? Just to get to his desk, I've got to move a 1500 pound vault door out of my way to get to my workstation. Uh, once I go through that vault door, I'm actually in a physical vault space right now. So what you see in this picture um, serves the workspace for two new employees who were recently hired. Um, in the background, you'll see uh, recyclable materials that we frequently have to go in and remove and recycle to Green Monster in East Hartford, just to keep space flowing in there for efficiency. Um, so again, I recommend adding a partition wall in there, utilizing one of the doors off the main corridors to build uh, management offices. Um, they're also going to incorporate a build and team's workroom uh, to make a more efficient workflow. You know, they, they support us all. I don't know if you've ever lost access to email or any other computer service. They're the ones you call first, but they also need to be able to do their jobs efficiently to serve us uh, in the best manner that they can. Um, we'll move on to the fuel island canopy on page 66. Dan will cover yep. that. So the fuel island canopy. So um, the purpose of this project is to install the fuel island canopy at the renovated public works facility. The original fuel island canopy was part of the renovation as part of the value engineering in order to complete the project within the approved appropriation. It needed to be removed. The foundations were installed to support the canopy. Um, the, the project would ensure or the installation of the canopy with code standards for the National Fire Protection Agency by installing properly automated fire suppression systems. Improved lighting and protection from the elements would greatly benefit users during inclement weather. Um, there are no other grant opportunities that we've identified for this project at this time. Uh, page 67, the salt shed replacement. This is our um, treated salt shed. It houses about 100 tons of salt for roadway treatments in our winter operations. Um, we've been patching this structure along for several years. It's over 25 years old. If you look at the picture above the concrete block foundation, we recently had the sill plates buckle out, the sheathing had buckled. So we've been replacing it as sections, uh, sistering studs together to try and keep the structural integrity going for this building. Um, we're required by the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection to have overhead storage for our salt. Um, it's in poor enough shape where I've identified this as a critical need for our winter operations. Uh, page 68, flooring replacements in the amount of $50,000 for your uh, fiscal year 24. Um, if anyone's been to town hall recently, you'll notice that all of our flooring is being replaced in uh, strategic stages by department. 
The typical age of a floor is five to seven years. It serves more than aesthetic purposes, right? So if you're not on a continuing replacement schedule for flooring, it'll contribute to a poor indoor air quality, which then turns into a health concern that's notable. It's measurable through an environmental consultant. It's a common complaint that facility managers receive, and I do like to stay on top of this. With the replacement of carpet, I am installing luxury vinyl tile. From a maintenance standpoint, it's more sound, it lasts longer, it's easier to take care of. Um, and we've actually replaced um, several areas in 330 Park Avenue after being there for a couple of years. We've identified it's not a suitable material for summer camps and activities and banquets and so forth. So um, it's important that we keep up with the flooring replacement. Page 69, Town Hall Masonry Repairs, the amount of $150,000. Um, so there is an extensive scope of work identified with the masonry repairs at Town Hall. Right now, I've got a portion of work uh, that's been awarded. It's going to be started in the spring for the northeast stairwell that's um, in very poor shape. There's leaning um, cheek walls, repointing that needs to be done, and capstones that are also jeopardized. It's a very extensive project, but unfortunately, it's a project that's going to cost you a lot more money in the long term if it's not addressed in stages right now. Um, so that's where these funds will be allocated. Page 70, Town Hall Security Camera Retrofit. So we have an S2 security platform in town right now. I'm glad to see that the library construction uh, uh, specifications call for S2. So S2 is a system that we incorporate for access controls and closed caption television. Our security cameras at 330 Park have it. I have rolled it out to public works. And I like to continue on with town hall. Right now, they use an antiquated Hick Vision camera that's no longer supported. I cannot replace these units if they fail. Um, also, there was a mandate. Uh, the FCC passed the Secure Equipment Act of 2021 that bans this particular brand of cameras because they are compromised to the public. You can tap into these cameras. It is my hopes, and uh, uh, Madam Mayor, you expressed this before with uh, the Board of Education. We do have the ability moving forward, if I were to retrofit these cameras, our police department currently has an admin uh, recording server. Um, hopefully that's the correct terminology, Dave. Um, so uh, each, each location will have a recording server, and ultimately at the top end of his S2 network, the police department has the admin rights. They will be able to set eyes on all of our buildings once this package is rolled out, and that's a huge benefit for the town. From a safety standpoint, from a response time standpoint, it's, it's a no-brainer. Um, so along with this, I'd like to roll out additional eyes in our facility. Currently, we don't have a view of the exterior of Town Hall, and we also don't have other high service areas, uh, high risk areas like the tax collector's office covered with cameras. Um, so that is where I'd like to allocate the $50,000. That's it. And that's it. We're presenting the other 11 projects. Absolutely. Yeah. Your attention to page 83, from return of the park improvements. Um, this year's request is for $186,000. You're still looking for a project that we want to tackle with this year, but this specific allocation is um, for the, um, uh, the park pavilion that we would like to have. The work that we completed this at this uh, park for the last several years is uh, last year we uh, completed the removal of the house. So the house has been demoed and returned to its natural state. Um, we did uh, replace the uh, culvert. We improved some of the, the walking trails, and we uh, with the assistance of DTW have identified and marked all of the trails of education to this point in time. Uh, we've been able to do the, these projects now. We did one that we received back in 2016-2017 from CREC when they were looking to uh, uh, take over that facility. They granted the town $150,000 and they moved away, so we've been able to tap into those funds there. Additionally, we've been able to work with the Bank and Audubon Society 
and lower the Farmers and River and Wild and Scenic Committee in order to obtain some smaller funds in order to help out with some of the uh, uh, base lifting of the um, uh, of the park itself. And DPW and through their in kind services has been, a, has been uh, very helpful um, in making improvements as well. Stage 84, Rockwell Park Athletic Field for Park Study Improvements. Uh, this year's request is for $1,372,000. Park plan has is not finalized. It's near completion now. Um, close to being ready to go, but there was a, uh, a request from the committee for the consultant to give us an additional proposal for what it costs to um, one look into uh, turf, turf plan that we have there, see any environmental impacts that we have, uh, potentially if we go with turf over natural, uh, over natural grass, you know what the cost difference is to maintain the park um, between natural turf and uh, uh, artificial turf. So we're still waiting for the proposal to come back from uh, less than exemption. Hopefully we should get something back sooner rather than later. But I feel comfortable moving forward with the request of the this year's request because that's for the northern portion of the uh, of the park. What this one million three hundred seventy-two thousand dollars entails is uh, re replacing the basketball courts to the north side of Rockwell Park, installing a. Uh, 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 a lighting project, uh, lights, lights for the courts, um, replacing the, the lights at the, at the pickleball courts, uh, parking area, and water retention for that area. Um, the reason why I moved this up, I would have liked to keep it into fiscal year 25, is our courts right now are um, starting to be vandalized for the last two summers. Uh, last year, we had a uh, car that came in the room and did donuts. Yeah, as well as uh, three incidents where uh, um, they used the garbage receptacles as burn barrels on the court. So there's a little bit of damage there as well. So that's why I'm requesting to expedite this. Um, if we are unable to fund that project now, um, if you go over to page 85, the contingency the backup plan, would be to request $65,000 to reuse the basketball courts that are currently there. Um, and I really don't like to request something when we're in the middle of, a, of another project and potentially replacing it, but the courts are in that area now. You can actually see on page 85, you can see the tire. You can see the tire tracks um, that are on the park. We move on to page 86, the neighborhood parks uh, playground replacement at Senate Farm. This is part of, in all of our neighborhood parks, we have a, uh, a playscape system. I have been requesting funding for this, for this park for the last several years. If we are not able to move forward with funding this year, I will unfortunately have to move forward with removing the playscape altogether and just be able to do its natural stuff. So um, that's it. That's in a farm area. we just ultimately more passive recreation area. Um, and we did a, a playground audit several years back. It was identified uh, as an area in distress. So that's a question of $80,000. Um, page 87 is park shade structures. One of the things that we've noticed through our routine visits within the parks is there is not enough shade areas uh, <clears throat> within the, the parks themselves. Yes, we do have tree, tree canopy that surrounds a portion of them, but if you look at this facility here in particular, here at 330, for the, for the youth groups that use this, specifically the soccer program that's coming over here on Saturday mornings, in between the fields, there's really not a shade structure for them to be able to set up um, to set up and to be able to provide any type of shelter. So we thought that this would be a nice system for us to be able to do and to incorporate throughout the entire park system. That's why over a five-year period, that request is $50,000. And then finally, page 88 is the Winterberry Hills Golf Course Improvement. I'm actually not requesting funding for theirs. I feel as if it's important to continue to identify projects that are being done at a municipal property in our capital plan. Wittenberry Hills, through their operating through their operating budget and revenues, they received the several of these projects. We're moving forward uh, this year with replacing the pump house, uh, the pump system for the irrigation in the pump house, as well as that. We'll also have uh, 
put a new latch on the pump house itself, uh, a gate, so this way they can gain access. Um, but I put a, a five year total in there of $1,350,000. We do believe, like I said, that we'll be able to handle these here through the, uh, the revenues that the golf course generates. That's it for me. Okay, 100. Do we want to have questions, Madam Mayor? Or do you want no, us to continue? Going. Continue? Yeah. Okay. So, under equipment and vehicles, DPW heavy equipment fleet replacement, $598,000. Just under half of that is for our one of our front wheel, six wheel plow trucks. We have a fleet of 15. That's a 15 year replacement cycle, um, which is a little longer than I'd like to see. We now have trucks that are in excess of 12 years old that we have seen the maintenance costs skyrocket on. Um, we do feel it's critical that we at least get the base funding for to replace a frontline um, six wheel plow truck. Uh, in addition to that, I have a um, uh, an F550 plow truck, which we need to replace one of our older trucks. It's a 1993 Chevy, which we utilize to do parking lots with. Um, the other item that is in this capital list is for a hydro seeder. A hydro seeder is used to, when we do road restoration work, uh, once we put topsoil down, rather than hand seeding it, we spray a hydro seed. You, it almost It's a mix of mulch and seed and water. The unit we have is over 30 years old. We've been peak patching it together with Band-Aids. It leaks like a sieve. It's just... It's just, it's day has come and we seem to be spending more time trying to keep it running than we do using it. So those are the primarily the main items that make up that uh, 598,000. I also will close the system at the Public Library. Um, just want to talk about our requests on page 102 and 103. These are repeat requests for dedicated library vehicles that are not going to be in the last budget cycle. Um, and also wanted to mention that the library has not received any of the money for projects at all either. Um, Bloomfield's fleet size is smaller than the other benchmark towns. Um, that's on page 105 of the book that we looked at earlier. Um, it's really not accommodate the library's needs, um, and especially with the upcoming building project and this particular that will become more important than ever to have a dedicated library vehicle. Um, it will contribute to our BPL Everywhere initiative. That's what we're calling it when we're out in the community. Um, we would use a vehicle every day from day one. Um, we already have staff using personal vehicles every day um, to perform business for the library and for public services. This includes our early literacy outreach, homebound, and more. Um, I wanted to read you um, a brief statement from a library patron. Um, this person says, I'm writing to inform you of the magnificent support the library offers me, a homebound resident of Bloomfield. Last year, I was thankfully able to read 89 books, which sustained me through some difficult surgery and rehab hospitalization, and was accomplished largely through librarian Mara Whitman's kind delivery of volumes. I'm sure of the numbers because the project inspired my granddaughter also to keep track of her reading, a delightful connection that reinforced our relationship. And my granddaughter reached 101 books. I urge you to initiate any budgetary initiatives that will support these vital services, particularly for homebound residents. They are vital and life-sustaining. That's the end of her message. But again, I wanted to reiterate that library staff are using personal vehicles for public services and the town's fleet is not large enough to accommodate our daily needs. Thank you. Uh, technology upgrades and improvements. Um, basically, what this is a Page 104. Page 104, yes, I'm sorry. Um, this is covering our infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure is basically the foundation of technology that we run on a day to day basis. Um, from all the products we've been talking about, the cloud based, um, all the even uh, the cameras, especially, uh, they take up bandwidth and they take up uh, space on the network. Our equipment right now is uh, near an end of life. Um, probably by the end of this, um, by the end of this year, our routers will be out of date. And then by the end of the year following our distribution switches, which is all the um, 
is a switch with all the equipment plugs into your computers, your printers, and all those devices, the cameras. Um, those will be coming up to end of life as well. Um, to to hold off on replacing those is possible. However, it would cost us a lot more money to um, replace them after the fact because once they go down, we have to procure new ones, and that takes time. So we will be down for a portion of a, a day or two um, to replace that equipment. Um, so you, this project is actually a, a very large project as far as IT is concerned. Um, we broke it up into two years, um, hopefully into two years. And um, the first year we'll be placing the core switches, which are the main switches, which gets us out to out of the building and in the building. And the uh, second fiscal year is we replace the distribution switches, which are all the um, endpoints and the switching in the buildings themselves. And then uh, the telecommunication upgrade. Um, we are looking at, obviously, we talked about before, we're looking at cloud-based tele uh, telephone system, unified communication systems. These, uh, this system, uh, we're looking at, the only reason why we're breaking this out into two sections is with we're planning to do with the library move. When they move back in, we want to be able to move them into the cloud-based system, and that will actually start with migration into the um, into the cloud, and we'll be able to start shifting everybody into the cloud at that point. Um, but the, that's the reason why we broke it up into 2024 and 2025. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. Um, we're going to start down the line. I just want to make a quick suggestion. Just a quick suggestion. My my quick suggestion is that you know we had a great meeting, a lot of information. Quick suggestion would be that we digest some of this and come back for fresh on Thursday with questions and comments during deliberation that we can ask if all of the staff is going to be here anyway on Thursday. Yeah, I think that we're gonna we're gonna vote so want to ask questions about fresh and then they'll be available on Thursday, but I really want to have an opportunity yep. to ask you know, kind of really wrap this up um as much as we can, but they'll be there. And so we're just gonna start with our questions and make a comment I mean just what Councillor Mahan said, I mean when 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 I go through this, trust me, I will have like 20 questions tonight because a lot of stuff in here. And if we look at even the town hall, and that kind of ropes into what this council has been talking about for years, I think we do these little piecemealing, and while it's needed improvement, I think we have to look from a holistic standpoint how we can consolidate with the town hall. Definitely, that's something that we've talked about that needs to be improved. And that's where you kind of mesh in with the Board of Ed into that. So I personally agree with my colleague that give us an opportunity to solve this in because trust me, there is stuff that is in here. When I'm looking at this overall budget and what we're proposing and you're looking at what's important, what can wait. There's a lot of fluff. That yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think that, you know, you make a great point. And so I'm going to give the opportunity for those who want to ask questions to the group. Okay. And I think that everyone's going to be here Thursday. And if you want to digest it, I'm going to digest some things too. I'm happy to ask some questions on Thursday as well. So we'll just do a, a round robin and we'll try to wrap up our night. But thank you all for your patience. Just go right down. This is for IT. Yeah. My question is, exactly. while the library is being built, what is the plan to interface with the facility that they'll be housed in? Is that factored in? No, that's not in this um, budget uh, CIP funds. Uh, basically, what we're doing is we're picking up everything they have moving it over to the temporary space and then just plugging it in over there, letting them run with what they have now. But we don't want to move that back into the new building. We want to be able to uh, put the new building in place with the new switches and the new phone systems so everything's all up and done. And that'll be kind of like a model for the, for the So they won't be underserved during that period of time, but they'll be correct. Right. Thanks. A very quick question. The um... IT and the land use um, renovations, can you combine those two projects for economies of scale? Can we combine the two projects? Well, like have the same vendor come and just look at a comprehensive for economies of scale. We could of through, so I'm actually trying to gather proposals right now. We could go through the Gordian EZIQC process where we get uh, competitive bids um, and it would streamline that operation. 
Um, and we could combine those into one project, yes. There, there could be some good. economy of scale. Yeah. That's it. That's all I yeah. wonder. Because it's in the same building. Correct. Same building, the economies yeah. of scale is kind of save a couple of thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Now, many of these projects are on this list. Not everything is discussed. Libraries, dams, are. And they're also not going to be on the list. So, everything that we talk about on that list, yes. And it adds up to something like the most pending. Mm -hmm. And you're asking us. To decide how much it is. No, I, I'm I'm going to be bring, coming. One of the things I'm going to be presenting on Thursday, as I did last year, and hopefully I'll get it out to you in advance, are uh, specific recommendations. Okay. So, and and we also are going to look at the projects from last year because my intention would be to say uh, we not use we cut from the budget for five hundred thousand. But you need any of these things that are going to be included, either has to come from LOSIC, or I guess that's the only end now, or we have to result from there being more urgent than something that we put in last year's budget or some prior budget that, that hasn't happened yet, some project. In other words, let's say if it's a half a million dollars, it could be a real big help. Right, that would be some of what we've been doing all along okay. after budget workshops. Uh, we send out emails following up. Okay. So, on that question, I, I think that would be a good for probably all of the managers. But I'm going to ask Nancy and and uh, Glenn to kind of take the lead to give the recap what was approved, what the status is, and different things. So, not unlike the request that Council Heard made of uh, new positions and vacancies. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Deputy Mayor? Yeah, very briefly. I, I just wanted to get an update on the Rockwell Park study. It was my understanding that the Rockwell Park Committee made recommendations. I, I thought I saw something that they had three different options that they were looking at and recommending. And so they're waiting for what they're waiting for additional report to come back from Weston and Sampson um, because the original plan was designed around the turf the turf park. As a result of the turf, there has been uh, concerns and potentially environmental concerns. So they want to get a better understanding of what the impact that they have in the area if we was continue to go there. So if you go natural versus um, artificial. Right. Um, so they're waiting for that. So I actually got the proposal for what it would cost, but they left out what the, from the maintenance annual costs would be for DPW the difference between the artificial and natural. So I'm going to get that back from Weston Sam. So once I get that, we will most likely be coming back to this government okay. body to see to see if we can find funding in order to um, pay for that. And on the basketball courts to resurfacing, are you do you have any concerns that the vandalism would you know repeat? I mean if we put the sixty five thousand in it and then the guys come out the next weekend on the courts, I mean do we have any safety measures, lights or cameras? To... We, we have. We don't have cameras there. We do have lights. Um, we right. have lights as part of that project a few years back. Um, unfortunately, you know, I'd love to have a low guardrail um, fence going around it to make sure that there are no um, uh, access to vehicles. I just don't know if that's something that we wanted to do based on the study itself. We want to put that type of fund in it. But yes, um, we do need either really in, for viability of, of the park, really one of the two would be. Right, thank you. And this, I think probably more for the town manager, I'm a little concerned about hearing about library employees using their personal automobiles uh, to deliver books or whatever, because there's some personal liability that the town could absorb as well as, you know, uh, the individual you should not be using a personal, you know, individual. You're not insured to, anyway, I, maybe that's something offline we should talk about, but that is, you know, that is an issue of insurance and liability that yeah it, it's, it's an issue that um quite frankly isn't isn't that unusual and nancy probably would be the best person to address it because i know she's addressed it with the library staff from a risk management um standpoint but we can certainly bring it back for 
drug discussion later. Right. And then I know we've talked a little bit about the consolidation of services and buildings and uses, but I think some of those issues require long-term planning. That's not something we can make a decision in the next month about what's how we're going to long-term plan for the Board of Ed, the, the library, the town hall. I think that requires some, some real planning and talking and, and getting together on that. But I think it's important to do. Uh, and we keep talking about what we really need to have those real candid conversations about how to consolidate. I'm here. Thank you. Great. Anyone else before we council play this? Just, just real quick. Um, you know, I, I think what we're seeing in some of these SIP projects is kind of the result of the last four budgets that I've been involved, or the last three budgets that I've been involved in. You know, we've, we've really pushed off a lot of capital projects. We tackled some last year, but I think we're getting to the point where we have to figure this out at some point and get some of the stuff accomplished because all we're doing is snowball. Um, so I think I think we all need to sit here and you know take the next two days to think about that a little bit. That, you know we've got products that are in the hundreds of thousands of dollars of money that have to get completed soon, or they're going to snowball into million dollar projects. And if we don't start addressing these, we're just going to have $9 million or $20 million, which already is $80 million to turn $160 million. We have to start, at some point, we have to start. Unfortunately, I hate to say this as a Republican, but start taxing our, 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 our people just a little bit to get some of the stuff accomplished, or we're going to have a crumbling town. Yeah, I agree with that. We have to keep our civic infrastructure extremely strong because that's how we invest in building. Anyone else before we go? No, Thank you. Motion by Council